Yo, 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 What is up in the house? The place to In my house? Uh, yeah, your house specifically. Um... Are you cool with that? Like, is that fine? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's not a lot up here. Um... That's okay. I can deal. You know, just... Your standard... Just make myself a little bed right here. Standard house. Oh, you're you're staying here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forever. Oh shoot. Um, so, have we discussed this before? I thought that was okay. Ah, uh, you know, I was I I didn't realize. I always thought it was kind of more of a like metaphorical or like a, a hypothetical is the the word I was looking for there. When I so, said like, hey, I'm gonna come move in with you and stay forever and ever. You right. I thought that was a metaphor. Yes. Or, or no, I thought it was a I thought it was hypothetical. You thought it was a haiku? Yes, uh the amount of syllables you said it in. Uh, just... I will stay here now forever and ever and until we all die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's that was said. that was what you said. I counted it out ahead of time just to make sure. I thought it'd, it'd be a more compelling argument if I, like, com told you I was moving in with a haiku. It was compelling. Um, and you know what? It's a lot. I, I appreciate the effort. I, I say yes. I'll smooth it over with Morgan later. She'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll be fine. She likes me. Yeah. Look, like, what if I assume came over to hang me. out forever? <laughs> yeah, now imagine that hypothetical. <laughs> and apply it to your everyday life now. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding, folks. I have not moved in with Brandon. I'm still in Pennsylvania. He's no. still in Michigan. This square up here is, is far away from, from my square down here. What Point to yourself on the hand. Let the people know where in Michigan you are. Okay, right here. Wait, I'm, not, I'm looking at the wrong window. Point at my hand. Okay. There, oh, that's right. Oh, I can tell exactly right here. where it is. It's oh my god, right it's near so this funny. Portion. Yeah, in Michigan, uh, as probably the viewers are probably unaware, but everybody in Michigan, this is a very common thing. We all use our hand to describe where we are, ge like geographically. It's, it's like the funniest thing to me. <laughs> but it, it, but it makes perfect sense. It's an but effective way thing. to describe where you're at. The only way you can see it though is you have to be from Michigan. If you're like from another state and like people start talking about Michigan shit, like you can't be from Pennsylvania and be like, <laughs> like is that here? You just take <laughs> like, something no. rectangle. You're like, I'm right here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what. I, but like, there's like a little nubbin up there, so you gotta like, like a phone case, but you got like a little, little sticky uppy part at the end there. But like. <laughs> The Michigan hand thing is something that, like, like I feel like I'm in the know of, like, a cool little secret. You are. So, like, when I'm in Michigan and there's other Michigan people, or it's like, okay, so when we met those dudes on Sea of Thieves who are all, like, from Michigan. <clears throat> little kitty. Oh my god, he's grown so big. He's big. That guy's grown up. Real quick, before we... One second, we turn off this blur so you can see this little fella there we go um real quick before we continue on uh leviathan den we got most. leviathan den in the chat welcome leviathan, leviathan den. den uh he needs some guidance tonight favorite yeah thing. there's this one streamer i watch occasionally that he has two windows and the one is just like his cat's bed next to him on the ground and it's just the cat sleeping all the time that's fantastic. I, um, I had a friend of mine doing a stream, and he had a dog. Like he was like featuring this other person. I thought, oh, who's this streamer? And it was actually just their dog, that's perfect. <laughs> like sleeping in the dog bed. Yeah. That's good. What were you gonna say? Uh, Leviathan Den needs some guidance tonight. Says, uh, need an opinion on what to have to drink tonight while watching Draw Bomb: whiskey, scotch, rum, tequila, or gin. So he has lots of options. They're all good options. I think for me, it depends on like what mixers you have around, you know. Well, some of those things you don't necessarily need to mix. Um, whiskey I disagree, and scotch. But that's and just scotch a are good spiritual. Alone. <laughs> uh, I think that's. I guess that's fair. I've had like. I've had good I've whiskey had, and like, scotch cocktails, but I can drink them straight. 
I, I mean, I think for whiskey and scotch, I prefer them straight over, like, mixed. But also, like, I don't do those drinks by themselves That's all fair. that well, regardless. But I can do it. Um, I so here's the thing. Scotch. What do you say? Ian? I'm... Uh, I don't know enough about those other two, or about whiskey or scotch, to really pick a favorite. Um, because, like, here's the thing, like, I love to get drunk, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, like, if I'm drinking, like, a mixed drink, um, it tastes bad. Like, it's like you, like, trying to cover up a bad taste with a good taste, and, like, all I taste for me is, like, oh, there's a good taste, but also I taste like that bad taste creeping in and that like weirds me out. But then also like drinking like drinks straight, maybe that is the better way to do it because I don't, I don't know. I, it's, it's less, it's more honest. It's a more honest way of getting drunk. <laughs> yeah, it depends what you're having. I don't know. I'm like, I think I'm starting to become like over mixed drinks because I'm tired of like drinking a root beer and then being like, oh, is that a little bit of gross in that root beer? This drink is, <laughs> now I'm going to think about that while I drink the rest of this root beer. This root beer's gone bad. Yeah, exactly. It tastes like that. So, you know, and also depending on the quality of the, of the root beer, of the, <laughs> well, yeah, that, <laughs> but I was going to say the alcohol, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I vote scotch. I actually got some okay. scotch for my birthday. I, mean, I might have some while, I, while we do the show. Which one is that one that I, I gave you at one time? Woodford? Is that the one yes. you like a lot? That, that's a, that's a that bourbon. Too. That's a bourbon, but uh, I like it a lot. Is it a bourbon? One of them is the same as the other thing. Like They're all whiskey. whiskey. They're all whiskey, but there's, you know, scotch is scotch whiskey. Bourbon is a type of whiskey. Yeah, there's okay. several different types of whiskey. See, like, I don't know any of that. <laughs> like, That's okay. I was told that after I like was I was done I was DMing a D and D session, and I was like, oh, those bartenders got like scotch, cause they got whiskey, they got bourbons, and someone was just like, well, those those are all the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, uh, the but there's com comparable things. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and you know, yeah, I'm still I'm still learning stuff too. I don't know. I'm not like a pro on all that. To me, you are like compared to me. Like, I've just drink. It. Someone will put a thing in front of me, and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> and then I'll drink it, which is really a bad attitude to have. <laughs> drinks, honestly, and it's definitely like male privilege that I can do that. But um, I would just put someone will put a drink in front of me and be like, okay, drink this shit, and I'll be like, okay. <laughs> I'll yeah. drink it, and then like you know whether or not I'm, I'm able to drink that. Like if I'm having a good time drinking that, that's going to depend on if I'm having a good time that night or whatever. How many times have you um, been roofied in your life? None. That's the crazy thing is because wow. I have a, just not been safe street. at all with my drinks. Um. So, you know that's definitely a thing, but uh. Nor, nor have I, like, had walks, like, my, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend would, like, sometimes she would, she would get really drunk, like, well after I, like, was done with work, like, she worked in the restaurant I met her, like, I was working in, and I met her in, and then, like, she would, like, I, so she'd work long nights, and then she'd go to, like, the, we had, like, a nearby bar that we would all go to, and uh, when I quit going to that job, I lived far away from that restaurant, that bar. Then, so I was just like, okay, well, I'm not gonna, well, I'm not gonna travel like 40 minutes to like drink till two o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to find work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, she would like call me some nights and be like, I think there's a guy following me home. Oh god. And uh, I just want you to stay on the phone with me so that like you're on the phone with me while I like get home. And like a lot, of, pretty much every time it ended up being nothing. But like, who knows? You never but, like, I never, had to I never had to call anybody. <laughs> like, it's never, no. like... Yeah, it's, and it's... she'd usually be, like, uh, this person was, like, yelling out at me, like, as I was walking past, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, no, I've never had to do that shit, so... It's scary um, out there. That's... There's, you yeah. Know. But, yeah, it's, 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 you know, much easier being 
a a gentleman. Yes. Less people. Anyway, on that, what a attack you. What a yeah, exactly. But what a fantastic subject to start a show on. We're here for another fun-filled adventure with Raw Bomb today. <laughs> um, gosh, you know. We uh, can we can steer out of that. That's what I, that's what I'm recommending. Uh, okay. Just because you know. Uh, it's an important subject. I have nothing to offer <laughs> to like make it better or anything like that. So, what I say I, to all I, the all the you know a attacking people out there, stop it. Yeah, why don't you just give it up, huh? Stop why it. Why don't you just stop it? Stop it. Stop being terrible. Life and Den says, "Well, I guess Scotch it is. I have a really expensive bottle, of really old blend of uh, Lagavulin." Uh, I'll have a watching the best show ever created. So I guess. Are we the I best show he, ever created? I think he's watching Frasier on the other screen. Oh yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. I've heard Frasier's. Uh, I've I've heard Frasier. I've watched uh, Frasier. I was hesitating um, which which show to be the the joke and. <laughs> I went with yeah. Uh, Game of Thrones, because uh, that that's actually that's old now. I've heard. I've been listening to like four different podcasts. And, uh, while well, I, well, I play, like, Assassin's Creed and shit like that, and, uh, -huh. uh, all, all four podcasts have been, like, yeah, Game of Thrones, and then somebody would be, like, yeah, that f they fucked that ending up, and then the other person would be, like, yeah, let's move on from how bad they fucked, like, it's, like, four That's different sad. podcasts all had the exact same thing to say about the end of, of Game of Thrones, and I haven't seen the end of Game of Thrones, but literally nobody has said, had, it's like the same thing, it's just interesting how like a lot of times uh, a show will have like people think different things about like the ending etc etc everybody apparently hates yeah but I don't think people are disappointed with the I mean some people are and there are aspects of it that I am but I don't think as many people are upset with the what actually like the beats in the story that happen it's just the execution they right. they fast forward through it all the stuff that you want to see everything else about the show is like and this, I think, is a strength. Is like excruciatingly slow and detailed. Like, you know, oh, they'll yeah, spend absolutely. they'll spend a whole season just traveling across the the world, and then at the end, last yeah. season, everything's just like, like all these things that could be season long, they fit into the last season. So I think that's what people are upset about, not necessarily they like got what dragons. happens. They can just, dragons are fast travel. Like you can just go everywhere. You know? <laughs> not every character has a dragon. Yeah, but like. You know, if, 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 like, your homie has a dragon and you're like, yo, we gotta stop these zombos, you, you got fast travel. Like, you got that dragon, too. That's all I'm saying. Well, yeah, they definitely use fast travel and skip through a bunch of stuff and condensed, condensed what should have been probably two more seasons into, like, you know, one. Right. I, that's what I did, like, about, you know, uh... The earlier seasons, I, I'm, I I need to catch up, or should I, I guess, but uh, I think the last season I'd seen was season five, or like whenever the Ice King like transforms that baby, um, oh, yeah. I had caught up to that, and I'd done that in preparation for you visiting Philly for us to watch like that later episode that we watched, um, and I actually haven't watched any Game of Thrones since then, it's become a lot harder to watch Game of Thrones, but also I have your HBO login, so what is really the hold up I guess there you go give it a try sometime yeah. there's definitely some episodes I might just do in it. there worth watching and you've already put a lot I, of time into it so might as well finish it up I put a lot of time into it and also like it's finite and it's like it's not 20 seasons of like 22 30 minute long episodes which is honestly double the length of a Game of Thrones season I think or it's maybe it's about the same I guess it's like what a 12 episode season at like an hour long and then a 24 episode season at 30 minutes that's like the same amount of footage to have to watch through but i mean i'm already almost done with it anyway so i might as well just finish it you know that, that was some fast math there. there and you're not wrong yeah is that is that 12 episodes per season for a game of thrones it varies know. season per season it's not right. it's not consistent but yeah definitely um, worth i would say probably worth finishing up even though it's yeah. disappointing and you already know I like that it. part yeah it's a good show i mean it's like what i've watched is a good show and like like you said the excruciating like slow pace is a lot of the fun for me yeah um 
It'd be an issue for like, me in uh, other shows, but uh, I think it's a strength in this one. I don't know. Like, uh, Better Call Saul is another show where I'm just like, oh, this show is so fucking slow. But uh, everyone loves Better Call Saul, and I think that that pacing is is like the pacing is good because you get to really explore the characters, you get to explore like this like sort of world that you're setting up, and also when like the good shit happens. Uh, you can really pack a punch with it because it's like, oh my god, I've been watching people talk over a dinner table for the last eight episodes. Now somebody just got their head uh, turned into a pumpkin. Or whatever the fuck they do. When I love that stuff. episode. Where they got the, right episode of the jack-o'-lantern out. episode. Yeah, um, the headless horseman walks in. And just... I, <laughs> I personally... I personally like that kind of stuff. If the writing's good enough, I like like the like chess game that is like just like slow, yeah. slow pace kind of like. The writing uh, does of, have to be a lot of good dialogue. I'm I'm all about that. I, I like that and stuff. Yeah. So, so I'm good with like that. Like my favorite, my fa like some of my favorite moments in like movies and TV shows are like the monologues people give before they like drop some like dope shit, like some news on like the main character, like. uh... In the one scene in Game of Thrones where, like, uh, Tyrion's in jail uh, for the death of Joffrey. Spoiler alert, by the way, to anybody who hasn't oh my also God. watched the show. He dies? I know, right? It's crazy. Uh. Who could have seen that coming? But, um, the dude from, what's his name? I usually, actually, uh, he's like this, this, the Viper, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, yeah, he's the Mandalorian now. He's the Mandalorian, that's right. Um, Pedro Pascal, um, his character, anyways, like, he, like, walks in to Tyrion on, like, in, in the cell. And, like, gives his long speech about Tyrion being, like, like, raised as, like, a baby, a treat, being treated like a, like, a fucked up baby, or whatever. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm gonna fight on your behalf, and, like, that's like a cool fucking moment but you have to wait like 10 minutes of him like telling a story and then like them talking over like a prison cell yes and then like the fight itself is so fucking cool and like it's because that. they really like they have like a lot of ups and downs and it's not like pure fucking adrenaline all the time i i liked the viper but i'd happily trade his life for that scene because it was fun, a lot of fun the fight between so him and the mountain oh yeah good stuff it's good shit he was he he was dumb as shit though. That's why he got yeah. killed. That's my my only yeah. point is he was like so fucking stupid that he got killed. Yeah. And I liked him up until that moment. Um. Yeah, he died. And it was fucking cool when it happened. Um. But yeah, well, I should finish that show. Um. Have you watched? Speaking of shows that really draw things out, make you wait. Have you seen Mr. Robot? Have you watched any episodes of that? No. Um. You've been I suggesting did. it to me for. Uh, like, like 10 years and you gotta you've, watch Mr. you've asked me that exact question 200 times but I still the answer is still no one day the answer will be yes just you hasn't gotta happened yet. watch Mr. Robot my dub Mr. Roboto Roboto it's so good I will watch it I will watch it that's my it's, promise. It's so to you. good. Um, I've only seen the first two seasons. I think it's over now. I think it's got like five seasons. But like the first I two seasons are still some of the best television I'd seen. Like there's just ah, there's so much good shit. And I hated that show at first when I first started watching it. Didn't like it. And then like they had one episode that was just really good, and I was like, oh, I'm misjudging this show. And then it just st it didn't stop being good. But then like I went back and I watched like an earlier episode, and I was just like. Ah, this wasn't actually. This was, I, I was more. I don't know <laughs> why I was shitting on this episode You're just so being much. Too harsh. I was being too harsh. But um, it's a great show. Very good shit. All right, uh, I will watch it. I will definitely watch it. Yeah. You get to draw the uh, bomb in the front. Well, that's why I left oh, that car cool. empty. I appreciate that. I think I'm done drawing the track. That's all I'm gonna draw. I cheated. I, I copied and pasted my car because I did not want to draw a second one, and I want to get to other drawings tonight. So. Clever. 
Clever girl. So that's I'm sure that's very fun for the viewer to just watch me control paste. <laughs> I think it's more fun than watching us like try and draw something we've already we just drew, you know? Like, what can I fucking just like? I can't I like, get this car to look as good as the first car. Leviathan Den, how's the scotch tasting? You yeah, said it was cool. old, so did it go bad? Uh... Anybody else getting slowly toasted in the chat? Let us know the sensation. <laughs> It's part of the show. It's, it's part of the, um, so, my fiance's mom always buys me the weirdest birthday gifts. It was just my birthday a few days ago. Um, oh, that's right. And, I didn't know, did I wish you happy birthday on your actual birthday? Did my phone tell me? I don't. You you did the day before. You like did like a. God damn it! But uh, she got me this mug. <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's like it's really. Oh well, that's fucking was, cool. Yeah. So, so I'm drinking out of that tonight. She was like, I, th I thought it would be good for your for when you play D&D. &D. And I'm, I'm like, yes, yes it is. Yes, it but will. also, <laughs> on the same note, I'm, I don't think I'll ever use a different mug now. I mean, what when you have this mug in your yeah. cupboard, you don't grab the one that says, like, live, laugh, love, that's sitting right next to it. Exactly. Like You, you go for the dragon mug. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, there's a benefit to just using one mug ever. You just wash the mug, and then you'd use it. That's like your mug for the day. If you um, don't wash it, you just get all the delicious flavors of all the things you've ever drank. Um, you know, there's someone who I know who they do that. <laughs> and it grosses me the living hell out. There's just like a big black stain at the bottom of the cup. Oh. They just like pour new shit and slurp away, and I'm just like... Is that mold? You drinking mold <laughs> coffee? I think that's called I mean, tea when you mix yeah. water with, with a liquid plant matter. Uh, that's some kombucha. <laughs> I hear that's good for gut health. Leviathan Den says <laughs> playing some Skyrim and watching Draw Bomb while drinking scotch is an absolute win. It sounds like it. And hey, uh, my mug is. This is the newest release of Skyrim. They they release it on a mug now. <laughs> there you go. How much was that? Sixty dollars too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it has all the DLC though with it, so it's oh, pretty that's cool. Perfect. It blows well, my mind that games nowadays aren't like six thousand dollars or something like that to like buy it, because so many games are just like maybe not six thousand, like a hundred dollars. Like the fact that yeah, the general price for games aren't a hundred dollars because they'll be like, oh yeah, we like build our developers while we were making this with like stress. And, video game uh, donkey even, just did a video on that like it's like a weird thing how it's been sixty dollars forever and then like when when oh, games first just started coming out like on atari and stuff they were like they were cheaper but they were the equivalent of like a hundred dollars now or more and then right. and now they're starting to slowly dip their toe into seventy dollar games for like playstation 5 and stuff but yeah but uh, I yeah, guess that. like i also and then you get indie games that are, he says, he goes over this in the video, and he's like, then you get indie games, which are like, are some of the best games out there, and they're all like 20 bucks. Yeah, it was just, that was like the next point I was about to bring up, is just like, you know, I haven't bought a game for 60, I bought like new games for $20, but like, I, I don't have like $60 to just like drop all the time. Like the last time I did that was when I still had a job. Um, and then you get Nintendo that's like, their game can be five <laughs> years old and it's still $60, they don't budge. So many companies do that like yeah the amount of games that are still like eight years old and are still sixty dollars is crazy yeah i'll send you the link to that video after after the show yeah please please does or maybe i'll post um, it in the discord what game you've been playing uh some games lately haven't you oh my god like i see the kitty in the background right now where's she oh is she on <laughs> oh i have to move <laughs> Oh wait, no, you can't see it right now, can you? I I can. The the Oh the, yeah, it's cut thing. off a little bit. Yeah, she'll yeah. probably jump back up on this chair at some point. Um I was I've been playing uh hanging out at a table. You've been playing a lot of Assassin's guys. Creed. You're like working your way through the different games. I so sure am. I was inspired and I bought uh Valhalla during quarantine and haven't really played it. So I started playing that. 
And gotcha. like Assassin's, all Assassin's Creed games are, it's kind of repetitious, but it's been pretty fun. I've been enjoying it. Yeah. I, uh... Sorry, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, no, I don't have anything else to say about that. Okay. Um, yeah, like, I have been playing... Uh, I, well, I had been playing two at the very beginning. Well, I played actually one and two at the beginning of quarantine, and we talked about that on, like, our draw bomb episodes. Uh, and drew some pictures, Assassin's Creed related, on the episodes when I, like, first started the series. Um, but, like, so I decided to play through them. Um, and it's interesting because I actually had Assassin's Creed 2 for the PlayStation 3 when I first went into college, but I never played it. Um, okay. Because it was actually, like, my friend's game. But she didn't have a PS3, but she really wanted to play it, so she bought the game and just gave it to me. And then, um, look, Katie. Um, <laughs> and uh, because I had the PlayStation 3, I just like got to hold on to it. But I never got around to playing it because I was like doing other games and shit, and like it was kind of low on my priorities. So, anyways, quarantine starts, so I decided to start playing through the series. Because why not have an ac- I have a Ubisoft Plus account or whatever, and. Uh, I might as well. And then my fucking computer died like a week after I finished Assassin's Creed 2. Um, and now I find like, I don't know, I, I don't know what compelled me, um, but I, I fucking started playing Brotherhood again. Like I had like a file going and then my computer died and then like it didn't save my file so I had to start over. Oh no. So I've been playing Brotherhood again. That took forever, and then I beat it, and then I just blew through Revelations. So I'm like, ah, maybe I can fucking just like speed through and get caught up. Um, what, we'll see. What's your quick review of the games you played so far in the series? <sighs> okay, um, if, if they're fresh in your head. Yeah, 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 no, no, I, I got, I, I got, I have thoughts about them, but Assassin's Creed One is, uh, and this, this is gonna be like within the context of the. Uh, the time that those games came out um but assassin's creed one is really impressive because like the technology at the time when that game came out like that climbing mechanics and like the way your dude just will just go up and down shit was is really impressive um and that's really cool and the writing is very good too but it's an otherwise pretty repetitive game but it's quick it it takes like 20 hours to beat anyways um so that and then two is basically the same game but like expanded upon and it's a lot of fun uh revelations no no no, uh brotherhood is basically two but with like a couple of like they just keep throwing new features at you so you're just like okay i'm playing assassin's creed 2 again and then they're like uh but there's assassin missions and also you can control people and also this and uh they just kind of keep doing that till the game's over and then Revelations is basically the same game, but like a little prettier. And uh, just like a tower defense mechanic added onto it. And otherwise oh yeah, I remember like a that. Smaller... Man. Yeah, and otherwise it's a smaller version of Brotherhood basically uh, in a different city. Um, and then now I'm on three and three is interesting because they built it, they, it's clear that they built like a whole new engine for the game. Uh, so it looks better, it plays a little bit slicker, but also the hardest thing in all the Assassin's Creed games is trying to walk through a doorway instead of climbing over the building. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be like, okay, I'm just gonna walk through this doorway, and then I'll, like, want to walk a little faster than, like, a very, very slow walk, so I'll, like, press R2, and then I do just a little start climbing up the the wall, and I'll be like, no, I wanted you to go in the door. Why? Um, My favorite is when you leap to your death when you're trying to like jump to like a branch or something. Yeah. And you jump like a thousand feet to your death and you're like, oh, that's not what I wanted, but okay. Yeah, exactly. Like the 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 climbing mechanics are very impressive and very fun, but also be- they're so user friendly that they become too. Like the hardest thing to do in those games is to act like a normal ass person. Um, <laughs> You're just the guy next to like everybody who's like, like scaling like a four foot wall for no reason by accident and like leaping yeah, from like exactly. like benches like two feet like the floor yeah. is lava. Yeah, it, it's, it feels exactly like the floor is lava sometimes with that game, um, and we'll see if that improves as I go to play four and etc 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 etc. Real so quick, three is fun. Real quick in the chat, we got extra attack RPG in the chat. Whoa 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 whoa. 
Good to see you. Good to see you. Ooh, with the, with the uh, and then we got uh, Leviathan Den says the combat in AC1 is great other than you can take in 100 dudes at once no problem I think you meant take <laughs> on 100 dudes but <laughs> yeah, dude, like, you fucking type the in uh, there bro that's the uh, uh, Assassin's Creed hot coffee mod uh, yeah. no problem and no, then next game really you hard. struggle with four at a time yeah they're still like it's like they spend a lot of the games just trying to like balance everything yeah, so, I don't know. I can still, I can still murder like a whole like army of people. How many dudes can you take in games? in the newest one or in the one you're playing right in now? In the newest one, I took in like at least fifty dudes before I realized the mission just wanted me to go somewhere else. I was <laughs> just like murdering dudes. I'm just like, I'm gonna save these slaves I just freed. And then the game is just like, nah, dude, like, we keep throwing more people in after you kill the last people. Like, in, in Brotherhood, I killed a bridge of, like, 70 guards in, like, 10 seconds. And then Revelations, I did this. Like, in every single game so far, I've, like, gone into a fight with just, like, endless people and just murdered all of them, like, endlessly. So, yeah, it's, once it's, you get, like... The moves down, like, it doesn't matter. If the, like, a mob of people can come at you and you just, like, counter everything yeah. and then kill them all. And especially, like, in the newest one, Valhalla, and I think, like, the last two kind of were going this direction as well, but mm -hmm. it's, you're, it's way more, like, aggro, so yeah. instead of being all, like, leaping from... You can still try to do this stuff, and you can still definitely, like, spec into it, but instead of being all extra stealthy, you're kind of just, like, run in and, like... Or stop like when you were watching me play a little bit ago and you were like you're literally just like stepping on people's heads is your main move and it's true <laughs> yeah. you crunch a lot of heads and because of that it's like go through this place and talk to this person and then your character when you get there he's like i better be careful around here i'm not welcome like this little thing and then i just walk in and just murder everybody on my way to my like destination because i'm like yes i could like sneak around but also these guys don't stand a chance so in those games, you know how starting in Brotherhood, and I hate this feature, I like love it and I hate it, but I mostly hate it, but there's like a feature that they started in Brotherhood where it's like, um, you have to get full synchronization on this mission, and in order to do that, uh, Ezio Auditore, when he killed this guy, he used a bomb, so in order to get full synchronization, you have to kill your target with a bomb. Um, and then it's, it, it does nothing other than, like, if you do it that way, they're like, like challenge yeah, mode. It, yeah, it's basically like a little extra challenge on top of all the story missions, and I hate it, because I am so compelled <laughs> to, to do that challenge every time, <laughs> um, but sometimes the challenge is really frustrating, because in Brotherhood, there's a couple where they're like, you're fighting 15 dudes, um, you're taking them all in, and, um, <laughs> uh, you, you can't lose any health when you're taking in 15 dudes. So I'll play the- That's hard the to fucking, do. It's hard, and like some of them are a lot- some of them are easy. Some of them are just like, kill this person with a throwing knife, and I'll like fucking toss a knife from like a mile away, and it'll kill the person. Easy, done. But, um, some of them you really have to go out of your way to like accomplish them, and every single time I'll do it because I'm just like, oh, I've gotten like 90% of them <laughs> easily. Might as well just get all of them. I'm surprised um, you feel that way because you're not like you're you're rushing through these games and you're not like completing all the side stuff. Oh, I am though actually. I mean, oh. the, uh, Revelations is the first one where I didn't do everything in the game. Gotcha. Um, I aside from that. like I the stupid you were shit. Pushing oh no 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 no! I'm a completionist, man. I have that's my problem with open world games. It's gonna get hard once you get game. to uh, what's the Egyptian one? That's that's gonna be the one that's where origins, you, I think, right? you lose your momentum a lot and completing everything because they. I mean, it's it's the games are just bigger. It's not necessarily like a yeah complaint, but oh yeah, yeah, they just they pack more shit in oh, because hello. it's easier to learn how to do that a little more. Um, I Revelations was the first game where I didn't go full completionist mode, Daisy Kitty, um, and that's only because I didn't realize. So like in Revelations, there's a bomb shop, and this guy's like, if you do things for me, I'll teach you how to make more bombs. And you're like, okay, I'm out the auditory. I'll go and do your things. Um, and so, I, I like did, I like went to the little block that's there that's supposed to be like, 
it looks like a mission icon, but it's just like the dude's shop. At least that's what it seemed to be. So I did that, and like, it would just take me into his shop, and then it'd be like, look at my different bombs you can make. And as you would be like, okay. Impressively, has an entire shop dedicated to just bombs. I know, I don't know how this dude makes what money. <laughs> and also, like, what, who's... You see a guy walk into that shop, you... Oh, that's you gotta be like... My bomb. You can't really have a storefront for bombs. You gotta be like... No. It's gotta be like a back alley situation. Or should be. Yeah. Well, he's got a storefront. But I would keep showing up and I'd be like, okay, so I just, this is just a place that shows me all the recipes for bombs in the game. And, uh, which is a new feature in that game and I barely used them. Uh, and then it's gone in the next one so far. Um, but anyways, I, <laughs> I beat the game and then it's just like, oh, you never did any of this bomb dude's missions. And I'm just like, dude, never any fucking missions to give me, bro. What are you, you talking got, about? You got the bad ending where nothing blows up. Yeah, I up. got the bad. Exactly. Um, so then I thought, like, okay, before I uninstall this game, I could go back and I could just real quick run through all those missions. It'd probably take, like, an hour. And then the credits took a while to get through, so I just fucking uninstalled the game. Um, and then <laughs> that was a freeing moment, because I didn't have to do every... Because, like, what are those bomb missions going to be? Like, oh, there's a guy, <laughs> his name is Gary Gabagool, and he's pretty bad because he's a Templar. Why don't you go blow him up with a bomb? <laughs> and I would do that. I and imagine it would be, be something like, okay. like that, yeah. Yeah, and then they'd be like, okay, well, here you go. You can make a new bomb. Okay, you're not going to use. Uh, and then the next mission would just be the same shit. So I was like, I don't need to do that. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it. I will feel nothing when I threw these missions. So I skipped it. And you know what? It was a good feeling. Uh. Um,. We've, we've talked oh, about yeah. Assassin's Creed in the past, and we drew a drawing of a bunch of assassins uh, in a classroom. I'm showing that on the stream right now. I don't know how well you could see it, but uh, I thought that was a fun oh. drawing. Just reminded me of it while yeah. we were... That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you, drew, you drew all the assassins in that, except I drew the guy who's coming out of, like, the half a globe. Yeah, <laughs> you drew um, one assassin. I drew one assassin. I drew the girl, and I drew... Uh, you drew everything in this drawing. I guess I did You drew the bookcases, book yeah. That those took a while. You can tell that those took a while. Um, but I felt like it made sense that you... Because here's the thing. When we did that stream, I didn't know you had played as many Assassin Creed's as you did when like we were having when we were doing that episode. Like, yeah. I started talking about the game. And we talk about like what we're playing and stuff like that. But this sort of gives us an opportunity to really... like It's an excuse to dig deep. Uh, and you're just like, yeah, like I played blah, blah, bloop, blah, bleep, all of them. And I was, I just, I, that's like a minor detail about you that I didn't know until we did that episode. Yeah, I, so I mean, it made sense for you to draw all the assassin stars. When they happened. first started coming out, I was enjoying them a lot, and I was like, kind of enjoying the story. So I was like, I better play these to see how it ends. And then, boy, was I the fool because they're never ending, baby. They're like Madden at this point. They're just like, yeah. And I've heard that. I don't really know, but the next one's supposed to be like Assassin's Creed Affinity or something like that, and I think it's going to be like an online type. Oh, uh, interesting. But it could be cool. I've heard that they're going to try to like do it so like, you know, there's seasons and things change about the world and stuff like that. So that could yeah. be cool. Especially if it changed That's... to like, like time frame. It might be cool. It also yeah. might be terrible. I don't know. So like, I love the season pass model for games because it's cool because the, it's like a, it's a more realistic, persistent universe that like actually changes and like the time you spend into it, it kind of gets like a little bit of a reward. Whereas a lot of like older online games would be like, this is going to be the same shit till the end of time that you're playing, no matter how long you play this game. Right. Um, and that's cool, but also I... The thing that kind of bugs me about the season stuff where like it changes the whole world is that all of a sudden i've like missed out on some of the game now so uh it's an interesting uh sort of duality some of those games you know? are I, I don't imagine this one will be that way but some of those games are starting to make it so you it like stacks and you can go back to the previous stuff if you want you right. don't miss out and it's just more content like, being added and that's cool yeah, a lot of them are just, like, cosmetic shit. Like, Diablo 3, like, its seasons are just like, oh, do you want spider arms to come out of your character? And I'm just the like, answer is no, yes, by shit. the way. I <laughs> yes, do. but I don't give a shit, like, in the long run of things. Like, I'm not gonna 
buy the game and like play it 70 hours a week to make sure I get spider arms coming out of my character. By the time you get the spider oh, arms, you'll be properly sick of the game already. Exactly. Like, Good, um, now I got the spider arms, time to uninstall. Exactly. Um, so, you know, it's interesting to see how games sort of like... Because it's clear that the, the season pass model sort of... Or not the, just like the seasonal sort of like paradigm. Excuse me, for uh, games is, is going to stick around, I think, for a while. Yeah, the like way to keep money rolling in on one product is obviously kind of a popular thing now, and it makes sense why, unfortunately, oh, yeah. for as a gamer. But the season pass is a way that potentially everybody wins. You know? Yeah, I think I think it's it's a it's a net benefit. I think it's a mutual benefit, mutually beneficial. I think. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, it makes a lot of sense considering like developers will spend like eight years on a game and then everyone will play it for a week and then they're like done <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next yeah. game. <laughs> no i get it i totally get it it's just you know yeah. there's a good way and a bad way and i think they're kind of figuring out a way that oh, doesn't yeah. feel like we're getting ripped off but also they can still do a model where money keeps rolling in oh i disagree i think they're working on a way to do it the bad way like that's almost, oh like, there always <laughs> will be that but <laughs> yeah, i feel like this like is a step in the right bad. direction with like how much you know the yeah. whole for a long time there was a dark period of like dlc being released along with the a, a game day one oh, and it's like, it's like it's like you're scheming or like paywalls <laughs> within the game oh yeah that shit was so rude and that still exists, but it's starting to fade away because of things, you know, there's been games that have been kind of ruined by that greediness, like, for sure. and when I say ruined, like, I mean, like, the, the, the player base kind of, like, boycott or got mad or complained a lot, like. Yeah, or just nopes out. Yeah, so that's pretty good, but at least, you know, not being as egregious about it. I'm interested in seeing what they do. I hear that the next Grand Theft Auto is going to kind of go with I've a I've heard similar... that, too. And I could see that being cool it, if it works. That makes sense. Well, here's the thing: like my favorite part about Grand Theft Auto V was the Grand Theft Auto Online, because like the dude I made was so fucking cool. I was like, why can't I just play as this guy and do like missions? Um, and I still need to be the main storyline. But I hear the I hear the main storyline is good. I mean, those games always have actually like solid storylines for video games. Um, but yeah, it would make sense for them to like make it so like you're your own character. It it just it's it's I think the the best way to sort of. I I, I don't know for open world games it just makes a lot of sense I think to I think sort so of turn too. them into more of the MMORPG experience. The technology wasn't always there, but you yeah. can do it now, so I can see that being a normal thing. Yeah. Um. So it's cool. I mean, in games like Destiny. Have been doing that mm -hmm. since the first game. Um, That's true. But anyways, uh, I just got to the part earlier in today in Assassin's Creed 3 where um, I just started playing as the actual main character of the game, um, which I didn't realize was going to happen. Pulled the old so switcheroo on you. They pulled the switcheroo on me, and they made my fucking guy I was playing as for like the first two hours of the game, they made him a fucking Templar. And I was like, what? Um, I've forgotten a lot of details of, in the story, because it's been so long. You know, I played these when they were new. Yeah. But, uh, um, so, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, you sort of, uh, you meet a Mohawk uh, woman, and uh, you, you know, it's, it's pretty much the moment I saw her on screen, I was just like, they're gonna burn. Um, and they did. Uh, but I didn't realize that, like, I wasn't gonna stop being my dude. <laughs> I thought that was just how he passed, like, the lineage on, because, like, it's implied that all of the people you play as eventually burn, because they eventually have to have Desmond. Um. That's true. But, yeah. But anyways, um, so I fucking, uh, you burn, and then, you know, they reveal <laughs> you that you guys in. And then, take some guys in and then you realize you guys are fucking templar and then i just started like i, I before i quit the game to go hang out with the family eat food etc etc like i was like in a loading screen as a child <laughs> and i'm like oh this is the character of the game okay um, make that crazy. game 
you play as a kid, and you're like murdering people, like Leon the Professional type situation. I'd play that. Oh That'd yeah, cool. yeah. That's definitely some games. Though. I feel like there was definitely games. Yeah. Would that get a lot of backlash if you played as a kid murdering people? No, I think it's only backlash if you murder. At, uh, other child. kids, right? But you can yeah. murder adults, no problem. Other kids? Are you a kid? No, but if you're <laughs> if you're playing as a kid. No, I'm thinking that if you're playing as an adult and you murder kids, that's oh, going to yeah. cause backlash. No, I was saying too. make an Assassin's Creed where you play as a child who's been trained. You murder other kids. And you're just like a small person, like leaping from trees and killing people. Not murdering other kids, murdering adults. Okay. But, like Arya Stark type situation. Right, right, right. I mean, I'm sure, I, I don't know, maybe when I do this mission that will be what the case. <laughs> like, who knows? I've I haven't played, played three. the mission yet. I don't remember much of it, but I, I would remember if you get to murder people as a kid. Maybe in one mission you do, I don't recall. Oh, I'm gonna go off and play. Yeah, maybe it's just pure setup, who knows. Um... But it's interesting. I'm having fun with it. It's it's a tr it's a chunky feeling game, uh, but it's 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 weird because it feels more fluid and definitely more modern than Assassin's Creed like Revelations and two because they're all the same game like two through Revelations. Yeah. They're all the same game, same animations, um, which is why like the numbering system actually starts to make sense a little bit for video games. But whatever, that's a whole different topic. But um, three feels like so much chunkier, uh, even though it feels more refined and modern. And I'm I'm just curious because like that's the thing I like about listening through like a band's discography or playing like a series of video games from like the first on to the last is you get to sort of hear that or like see that progression of like oh they started out doing this and then like this happens and then they what's do the this. setting of three. Uh, it's like Jamestown, or, uh, it's Boston, it, but, like, during, like, the, like, the start of the Revolutionary War. Like, I've oh. already met Ben Franklin, and i And you play as, like, Washington. a, you play as, like, an, a Native American, right? Well, you start off playing as a fucking British guy. Right. Um, okay, so I didn't finish then, that one, so maybe I, uh, maybe I don't know what happens. Maybe you do get to... Oh, man. Maybe you get to murder some people as a kid. I think you might, I think you maybe do. Uh, Leviathan Den just redeemed hydrate and posture check. So, you know, straighten that spine, drink some, drink some, some liquids. Thanks for keeping us on track, Leviathan Den. Did they we'll, hoist you? We'll live longer now, certainly. All right. I'm not gonna get that tech neck. Um. Ooh, tech neck. Isn't that like little skateboards you play with? I love those skateboards. Yeah, they're my favorite. <laughs> um, but we're not going to get them anymore because they're not fashionable. Dang. Um, so yeah, they're fun. I'm enjoying them. I'm enjoying playing through the series. I'm enjoying watching the evolution of the gameplay. It's, it's interesting because uh, 3 is such an upgrade from the graphics of all of the previous games, even though they, like, fucking Desmond's face looks <laughs> like all fucked up and shit like that. It's pretty amazing. You posted amongst some of the fr our friends all the different, like, character models, and they're so different. I, you, should all post different. Them in, you should post them in our Discord. They're, like, okay, I will. widely different, but I don't know if anybody... Uh, yeah, I don't know if anyone will care, but I care, because yeah. you're you playing should. as the sky. Everyone should care. <laughs> It's, it's, and it's like it's a, crazy how different everybody looks. It's supposed to be like a, the same guy, but the character like changes time, race like, like four times from the, he, the way the photos look. Yeah, it makes no sense. And then like also he like gets and then loses scars, like in <laughs> I don't know. So like Ezio in Assassin's Creed Two gets a scar like the very beginning of the game, like one of the first things that guy like a scar on his lip and i guess you're like desmond i maybe had a scar on his lip in the same place before and it's just kind of like whoa goofy coincidence everyone in your family gets a scar on their fucking lip in the exact same spot um but i don't i don't remember desmond ever getting that scar but then like assassin's creed uh at least not maybe not two but revelate uh, brotherhood and revelations like no he's got it in brotherhood and then he's got it in three, but he doesn't have it in Re Revelations. But he's got a fucking scar on his lip, like Ezio does. And I'm just like, what? 
It's like, yeah, that would have been a really cool detail, but you didn't take the time to set it up. Can't just... Yeah, do you guys have the fucking scar or not? I don't know. <laughs> is this are scars hereditary now all of a sudden? Is that what we're implying here? Assassin's Creed? I don't know. Um, anyways, my complaints about the games are like petty little bullshit like that. Otherwise, I'm having a good time. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, out, I talk podcast. about, uh, how much, oh, oh, I've played all those, blah, 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 but it turns out you're on three, and I'm like, oh, that's where I stopped. <laughs> so it's like, I didn't, I didn't play that many of them. But. Yeah, I mean, that's, hey, look, the amount of them that I've played so far has been a long time, so, uh, you've played a significant uh, amount of Assassin's Creed, if, like, that's where you stop. Yeah. I guess that's true. Three isn't the third Mark. game. No, it's not. It's like the fifth game. So let's let's talk about numbered systems for video games. In a movie, um, it, unless you're rebooting it, it makes sense to be like, this is the next movie. This is two, right? <laughs> but in video games, it does and it doesn't make sense that like, there's Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, Revelations, 3, and then three is like liberation, and then four, and then four also has freedom cry after that, and then, and then I think they just stop with numbers after that. But it makes sense um, because I feel like a new number in it video games usually it means like a huge upgrade in like the engine or yeah, like the, that's true. The physics and in in Assassin's Creed it does mean a new story, and like like for instance in Grand Theft Auto, uh, they have three. And then Vice City came out, and then San Andreas, and then they had Grand Theft Auto 4, and, like, Grand Theft Auto 4 was, like, a whole new-ass, like, console big and, like, big upgrade. Although, San Andreas was a huge upgrade from Vice City, honestly, like... I remember when Red Dead came out, there was... Okay, so there's Red Dead, Redem or Red Dead Revolver, which a lot of people don't know about. Red Dead Redemption... And then they were they announced the new one, but they announced the title, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I wonder what it's gonna be called." Like Red Dead Revenge, Red Dead blah blah. And it was just Red Dead Redemption Two, and I was like, "Aw, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> disappointing." Right? Exactly. I, was, I was like, "How are you guys gonna fuck up this new convention of naming that you you've come up with?" It's brilliant, but nope. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two. That's a great um, game. It's, it's I need to play it. I need to get a new graphics card because I love three it. is it's, starting to make my computer chug. I would say, personally, I mean, I mean, two makes my computer chug and mine's pretty good to go. Granted, they've added some updates and my graphics card is updated and now it runs pretty solid. But in the beginning, my, or last, you know, when I started playing it, it was hard. Um, I, uh, but I'm sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead. real quick, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's a great game. I think I think it's probably the most like in personally i think it's the most impressive open world i've played i i think as far as like open world games go i think that's like the the best one that's been done yet right i uh i'm so mad i tried to play control because i beat oh yeah assassin's creed brotherhood i want to say or maybe it was revelations but i beat one of them and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna take a break from Assassin's Creed. So I tried to play Control because that was kind of next on my list. And then I liked I, it. I, the game starts up, and then the game gives me a pop up that says like, Nah, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you can't did, play this fucking game. Did it treat you like that? Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like a bouncer at a club that's like, you're not cool enough to get in? Was it that rude? Like, I didn't less? even see the main menu of the game. The game was just like, we're not even, like the main menu might hurt. We don't want to get your hopes up. It like popped up in like a gray dialogue box that was just like, oh, you ain't playing fucking control. <laughs> Why don't you go play Minesweeper <laughs> or something? Who do you think you yeah. are? That's what it felt like. And you know, fair, but also like rude. rude. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I can't play control yet. Any people in the chat play Control? I, I, I liked it. Um, it gets kind of re repetitive, but it's. I like the. I definitely love the like. Not to talk about a game that you just announced that you can't play, but uh, I definitely like the like the vibe of it and the, like the the setting and the like the sci-fi and it's all kind of like mysterious and cool. Yeah, I, like I thought the actual like combat was kind of. There's ways that they mix it up quite a bit, but at the same time as 
by the end of it, I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I, I didn't play the DLC, yeah. but I, but I really liked it, and there's certain parts that were just super, like, really cool set pieces, and and it was really fun learn, getting new abilities and powers and stuff like that. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, Z Newts in the chat says that they've played it, and it's funny because I was actually the one who told Z Newts you should play it, but I hadn't played it. And then I was just like, okay, well, like, I'm gonna fucking play it now. And I can't. <laughs> I if can't. you know and Zach looked... with Z Newts, it's easy to recommend to him games because he very much has a type of thing that he likes. And control fits yeah, into that, I would say. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so like, I would love to play Control. I've played all of Remedy's other games. I've played all of the Max Paynes. I've played all of the Alan Wakes. Um, I love it's not like I'm. Max Payne okay. 3, not to change the subject. Max Payne 3 was but, dope. Wow. Although I, don't, I feel like I don't hear about it very much, and I just was like... For yeah, what it was, it was just like... It checked all the boxes for me. I, I had such a fun... I, I feel like I want to replay it now. It's just I really, want to play it. The bullet time is really, like, fun in that. I mean, it's fun in all yeah. of them, but just, like, that's the one where it really, like... I feel like the technology caught up to it, and it just made it the coolest thing. Well, I think what really helped Max Payne 3 is that bullet time wasn't your only option, so it helped it not get repetitive. Like, in Max Payne 1 and 2, if you wanted to survive a gunfight, your option was to, like, dive back and forth. <laughs> yeah, and just, like, oh. just leap over and over. <laughs> yeah, until you fucking get them. Uh, but in Max Payne 3, it made sense that, like, you'd want to hold on to the bullet time when you need it, and then, like, otherwise you were fucking, like, taking cover and, like, just playing it like a normal third-person shooter. Um, the, my main complaint with Max Payne 3 is that the storyline just feels like a whole different game series because like, yeah. Max Payne 1 and 2 were both about like, you know, oh, he's trying to get over like the death of his wife and his child and sure that's pretty one note. Uh, but then like 3, I, I was like, I was like, I was playing it and the whole time I was wondering like, when's it going to tie in to like Max Payne as like the tragic or whatever character that like all the games have been about and then i got to the, the game and i was just like oh no it's just about like organ farming and uh i guess he's he's just gotten over everything and that's that's the game and i mean he clearly like hasn't gotten game. over it i mean he has like a huge drug problem the whole game well, yeah but like that's it and like that doesn't play into the plot at all it's just like by the end of the game he's just like oh hey uh, I stopped these organ farmers, and I'm on this beach. I'm gonna go get another drink, and la da da. And that's the end of the game. And I'm just like, but okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just not gonna address. That's I, fine. Uh, it's fine. It's just yeah, not, that, that, that's fair. Maybe they. I think they were trying too story. hard to like play to the real timeline, meaning like it's been this many years since the last game, so now it's like yeah. you know, ten years later for this guy as well. But, uh, yeah, but I, 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 I get sense. what you're saying. It, it makes sense that Max Payne would eventually get over, like, after, like, 20 years. Like, he would eventually get over, like, the death of his wife and child that he has avenged twice he's, now. He's heavy on um, drugs and alcohol, so I don't think he's totally over it. He's, like... Yeah. Like... But it... Addiction's a big theme of three... It is, but then it, it like it, again, it doesn't tie into anything at the end. And in, in the end, he's just kind of like. It's like you can uh, be saw... you can be addicted to pills and save the world. Yeah, or Brazil, or you know whatever <laughs> uh, favela he saved in that game. But like the the central storyline has nothing to do with like his wife and kid. In the end, it's true, just like true. you stop some organ farmers, and like that's a cool story. And it's a it's a brutal story, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But because the first two games were so heavy, like in the first two games, you would have like nightmare sequences where you like <laughs> reimagine like the death of your wife and child. Very true. And then in the third one, there's none of that, and I'm just like, that's fine. It makes sense that he might have gotten over it somewhat, like at least in terms of it being not like central to the plot. Um, that just doesn't feel like a Max Payne game, though. It feels like a different character. Um, and I don't know how to reconcile that, so it was weird. Maybe I should play those games again, though. I, uh, yeah, that's fair. Like five, six years since I've played them. I'm a little biased because when I was playing Max Payne 3, um, there was a moment when I was in an airport. I think I've told you this story before. Oh, yeah, a mo yeah. moment when I was in, a, in an airport, and um, 
none of this was scripted. You know, I was fighting some guys and I did the bullet time jump onto the center part of an escalator. And then I slid down on my back, uh, slow motion down the whole like escalator while shooting a bunch of guys. And it was the coolest thing ever. And then I was like, oh, I love this game because of that three, <laughs> three seconds that just happened. That'll do it. Has anyone made the sketch yet of what the people fighting Max Payne see? And it's just like no bullet time and just him just like jumping on the ground a bunch of times while shooting at them. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that like, uh, It would be hilarious. Like that, that. Yeah, I guess you'd have to be like, it'd be like a sketch, but it'd be like, hey, this guy can't hit this guy. He's jumping back and forth. Well, over <laughs> here. I guess I guess we should just give up. I don't know. Oh, I'm getting shot. Oh, no. <laughs> um, Zenoot says, uh, I fucking love how Control and Alan Wake are in the same universe. I didn't realize that. I've never actually played Alan Wake. Um, I played I know Alan that. Wake. One in, I played Alan Wake and Alan Wake's American Nightmare, and also all the DLC for Alan Wake. Well, maybe um, I'll go I play Alan Wake after games. this. Oh, wait, <laughs> I you can't. I, I can't. I can play Alan Wake. Alan Wake is, like, as old as Assassin's Creed 3, at least. Oh, well, I didn't mean you couldn't. I thought something like they couldn't sell it anymore or something weird like that. Oh, no, they, they can sell it again, but there was some weird shit over, like, music copyright with those games, because... Um, I think I just, I, I mean, I definitely did say that this just now, but I fucking hate those games. They're terrible, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, I don't like them. Um, got, got one vote every, against every Alan Wake. That's right. Every, uh, chapter in those games, like, which is just, like, you know, a, a level, essentially, like a sequence, um, ends with, like, a song that you'd hear on, like, the radio or something like that. Um, which is fine, but that's, like, what made it so that they had a hard time selling those games anymore but I, I i played alan wake one and i didn't like it and then i played alan so wake played all the dlc I, well i played all the dlc because the first one ended on a cliffhanger that made no sense to me and i was like what the fuck so i thought maybe the dlc will answer this question for me and the one kind of did but not really um, and then I already had Alan Wake's American Nightmare, so I was just like, fuck, I might as well play this, because I have it. And then that was worse. <laughs> um, and, like, worse in a very unique way. So, like, I hate Alan Wake 1 because it's terrible writing, and it's about a- it's a story about, like, a writer, and then, like, as you go through the game, you'll collect, like, chapters of his manuscript or whatever, and then if you read them, like, they're the worst writing I've ever- like, he should not be selling books, this guy. His writing's fucking terrible. Um, he'll be like, The shadows were so scary. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds <laughs> it's compelling. Weird. Like, it's- it's- I, th I think, like, the people who make those games are, like, Swedish or something like that. Um, so Ew. there's- I, th I think there's, like, a translation thing going on. Like, they're writing amazing prose and, like, Oh, that's Swedish a really cool record, motorcycle. I heard that too. That guy was so cool. It happens so often. I should have some like <laughs> something I do every time. In yeah. Chat when a motorcycle drives oh. by. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that too. What a cool guy. Um, what a cool guy making his motorcycle so loud. Um, but yeah, Alan Wake's yeah. one is fucking stupid and like pre pretty misogynist oh. in sections. And then like your guy's a dick, and I didn't find him like. Any reason I'd want to, I didn't like any of the characters. I hated it. It wasn't scary. And then the ending is like, <laughs> your guy's like writing his book, and then he's like, but the lake wasn't a lake. It was an ocean, and that like affects reality. And then that's where the game ends. And then nothing. None of it made sense. None of it made sense, and it was annoying. And then Alan Wake's American Nightmare is they make you play three levels, but then you have to repeat those three levels. Literally, like the point. The point of the game is like your guy will play for through the first three levels, and then he'll play through the first level again, and he'll be like, "What? This is like deja vu." And then Ugh. you play the other two levels, and then you play the first level again, and he's like, "I've got it. I'm in a loop." And then you play that level and then the other two levels and like you'd think maybe they'll change things up a little bit but no you pretty much hit the same beats but your character will comment on the fact that you're playing the same two levels the same three levels over and over again well that seems like um, like they're really phoning it in 
It kind of, I mean, I think they were. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I fucking hated those games. I've seen, I've had some people be like, I like those games a lot. And I'm just like, damn, I wish I did too. <laughs> because then I would have enjoyed my time I spent playing those games. I knew you hated those games, and I was the moment it got mentioned in the chat, I was, I, I was leading you into shitting on it. Cause I've, <laughs> it's funny how you played them all and disliked them. Um, other things did, in the yeah. chat, Live and Dan says, I think the game that blew me away for uh, the time period was Prototype. It was just so out there and the controls felt different. Yeah, Prototype was cool. Yeah. I never played the second one, but I, cool. I enjoyed the first one. I always liked that. I, I know there's a lot of them now, but I always enjoy that type of game where you just like start with nothing and by the end you're basically like a god in the city <laughs> just yeah, I like and, like that that leveling up part is fun um i never played any of the prototypes but i did play a demo for hulk ultimate destruction which prototype Similar. was made by the same guys i think actually oh I, that makes a lot of sense I've, I've played them both and yes they play similarly and kind of they're comparable in some ways um I have, to, I have to confirm the Hulk Ultimate Destruction comparison. I think it was supposed to be a sequel or something like that, but it got canceled, so they just turned it into Prototype or something along those lines. Okay. Um, but I had a roommate who played both of those games, and he, he liked them, and that was cool. I think I have one of them on Steam. I would, I would uh, not be surprised if I had Prototype like 1 or 2 on Steam, and I bought it for like 2 bucks. Um, Zenu says... Max Payne and Sam Fisher became the same person. That is true. Also said, and Prototype was cool as fuck. The early PS3 era of devs going nuts with physics. Yeah, there was some cool yeah. stuff. Especially yeah, like, after Half Life Two came seen out. It. After Half Life Two came out, Half Life Two was just like, yeah, dude, check out our fucking physics. It's gonna work on exactly two puzzles in the beginning of the game, but then it's just gonna kind of be there. And then all, all the other developers were just like, well, shit, Half Life Two did it. I guess we should make all of our objects have physics too uh, so they played around with that for a while and uh, I have nothing else for that story um, <laughs> uh, yeah there was a lot of I mean I remember when it was like I remember like E3 like half the tech demos were just like look at this look how this piece of wood breaks doesn't it look like how wood actually breaks and I was like yes it does. does. I can't wait to, I can't <laughs> I can't wait wait to, to ignore that. <laughs> pieces of wood. Uh, I, 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 you know, bought into the hype. I was excited, and it was cool. Oh, you know, it's nice I to see the technology. It, I'm just an older. I'm just a 30 year old curmudgeon now, and I'm just like, man. Remember when everything? Like, I was so excited about like, oh, I can throw this jug. You know how much that have, like I like stopped a combine by throwing a water jug at them. Never. I mean, <laughs> you have a that. gun that is like a physics gun. This is true. The Half-Life uh, 2, I guess, was the only game to actually make it. Do you remember being excited about things? I, yeah, I don't get excited anymore. <laughs> um, Aw. I know. Was... Alright, everybody, we gotta go. We're all... We're I don't feel now. emotions anymore. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that what Dennis says in It's Always Sunny a lot? He's just like... Something like that. In years. Um, Zone Dog says... Uh, I wish you had played the Riders Republic beta to discuss some true doo doo. Yeah, you well, you were saying it wasn't good. Uh, so I'm done. I yeah, I was kind of following Riders Republic myself because uh, I would love to have a great open world snowboardy game. Is um, I this might be terrible too. I know it's older, but I've never played it. Is Steep good or is that terrible? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Zendog said that shit was wild. And then he agrees with me, he says, yeah, what? The gravity gun was like half the game. Gravity gun was half the game, but also, like, outside of the gravity gun, um, so, like, here's the thing. You do that one puzzle at the beginning of uh, Half-Life 2, then you get the gravity gun. Gravity gun's really cool. But aside from the gravity gun, where you just threw shit at something, and then that cinder block puzzle, like, that's it. That's what the physics does. Like, otherwise it's flavor, and that's fine. It's very impressive, it's fun. Things get knocked over. Wind will, like, push shit around, like, when the helicopters fly over, like, wires will go woo woo woo. Like, I think it's all important that that stuff is there. Um, 
it's just that we were all shitting ourselves like whoa and then uh that's all they did <laughs> that's it um now like i i pay attention in games when physics are fucked up like in phasmophobia one of the first things i noticed was that the basketball fucking sunk like a rock and then didn't bounce and now the basketball is realistic in phasmophobia and i'm like this is a better game for it <laughs> but the the physics i, th I think we got really excited for the physics in a lot of those games and it didn't affect the gameplay it just sort of affected our immersion into these worlds i think part of me was just getting excited that the technology was getting there not necessarily like i yeah. can't wait to bounce a basketball realistically in half-life <laughs> in between yeah. shooting Actually, people it's more it's more frustrating in phasmophobia now that the basketball does bounce realistically if i miss a basket i have to run even further to get my basketball back so honestly like pfft, realistic physics no thank you yeah it's like um, can we knock that off let's go back to you know unrealistic stuff yeah please uh hold on there's zone dog very much disagrees with what i'm saying um leviathan that's, says, i feel like that's it, often the case Oh, yeah. Well, I like to have unpopular opinions because I feel like it makes me edgy and cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, let me see. Zone, uh, Leviathan Den says, Speaking of Half-Life 2, somebody went through the entire HL2 coding for 10 to 12 years and put together the main Citadel Tower and finally figured out that the true height of the tower is 6 miles high. Um, and that's pretty high. That's pretty dull. It's a dull tower. How tall is the tallest building in like in miles in real life? Let's find out. Probably. I, just, I don't know uh, if there's one a mile tall. Maybe. Maybe I have no concept of. Hold on. Let's see. Burj Khalifa is the tallest building, so we knew that. Um, Eight hundred twenty-eight meters. So now I'm gonna convert meters to miles. Uh, but I was listening to my dad wrote a porno, and uh, <laughs> they. Uh, so the Burj Khalifa, the highest tower in the world, is half a mile high. Okay, so um, six miles is more than that, correct? Yeah. Okay. By about uh, 12 times. <laughs> 12 times the size <laughs> of the Burj Khalifa. All right. Well, um, that's big. Pretty big. Um, but in, in this one episode of... Uh, the book that they read and my dad wrote a porno like they have sex in like an airport co or an airplane cockpit and then they like crank a lever and it like the airplane goes so high in the sky it's like high enough they like the people who read the book were just like this mileage makes no sense so they like looked it up and it was like uh high enough to like start to lose consciousness or something like that because a lack of oxygen or something along those lines like those books that uh they read in that podcast are absolutely insane um yeah citadel six miles high that's 12 times higher than the burj khalifa if my math is correct it is i was just um, you know playing dumb for, for for the hilarious comedy that it was yeah. Um, some, uh, there's some discussion in the chat uh, about, I think, Skyrim. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Xenu says, my super spicy take, Skyrim sucks. Uh, it does suck, says Zone Dog. Yeah, uh, Zone Dog agrees. Uh, they've become friends over this issue. Um, and uh, says, uh, Zone Dog says, bland. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's what they all say, uh, and... That's what they I, all say. I like Skyrim, so... I like Skyrim. Apparently uh, that's the spicy take, because the majority is saying they hate it right now in the chat. I never played Skyrim unmodded, is is my spicy okay. revelation, I guess. Um, like, I never played vanilla Skyrim, because uh, there was a couple... Isn't that a Tom Cruise played. vehicle? Vanilla Skyrim? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Um, nice. But um, I had like mods that I felt like were absolutely necessary for my enjoyment of Skyrim. Like, uh, if I explored a dungeon and I got like the main treasure 
that every dungeon had, it would like check mark itself in my map, and I felt like that was important for my sense of completionism. Yeah. Um, I had a mod that if I snuck up on people and I hit them and I got sneak attack damage, it would do the it's John Cena. That's um, necessary for your sense of completion as well, I think. Absolutely. Actually, I think I have. One. Um. So like, pretend I'm sneaking up on you. Okay. Um, what is something that like? What is one of the three NPC lines? Wow. <laughs> right what yeah, was that so noise right. or what did they say after they get an arrow <laughs> stuck in their face is someone there <laughs> yeah i love that shit in video games like and in, in the assassin's creeds it's so um, it happens so often where you'll just be like you will murder somebody two feet in front of somebody and then they won't notice and they'll be like what's over there then <laughs> yeah like they're getting better at that but it's still pretty dumb um let's see uh <laughs> Zen, uh, uh, sorry, that was rude for me to, to start with that yell, <laughs> or that laugh, but, uh... <laughs> uh, Zone Dog says, Death Stranding Top 10 Last Decade. Um, Zone Dog also enjoys doing taxes, that's also in his top 10 for video games, just filling out his taxes at the beginning of the year, he says that's a lot of fun. Uh, Zone Dog enjoys mowing the lawn. Death Stranding right here from Brandon. Um, I, I haven't actually played that much of it, so I just like to... I like to... Taxes <laughs> I'm just joining the... I'm hopping on the bandwagon to shit on Death Stranding. I played, like, the I'm opening mission. And I should play I'd more of play, it. I'd love to play Death Stranding. I, um... There's just so many fucking games. Like, I'm gonna start True. playing Psychonauts so I can beat it in time to play Psychonauts 2. There you um, go. Stream it. Your machine can probably run Psychonauts too. I have to assume. I mean, it's not like they're, we're trying to realistically recreate the human face in this game. It's just it's just not pretty looking from what I've seen. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll start streaming some Psychonauts maybe tonight. We'll see. <laughs> uh, Zenut says Bethesda doesn't deserve to re-release Skyrim every year. 100% agree. That's annoying. Yeah, that's, uh, it, them and Grand Theft Auto. Like Grand Theft Auto gets re-released like a million times. Skyrim's worse for sure. Like in yeah. re-releases, it's become a meme at this point, and they still do it. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Zone Dog says Death and Taxes Stranding. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the uh, extended cut. Yeah. Uh, Zenut says, make a Skyrim mod where Dovahkin does King does all the taxes for all the plundered loot. Yeah, you have to you have to claim that stuff or the IRS is gonna fucking come for you. Yeah. You think a dragon's scary? Wait till the IRS comes for you. There's a 10% adventurer's tax um, on any loot that you get. It's pretty pretty rough. I used to be um, an adventurer like you, but then I got audited. Yeah. They call it the uh, Nerevering uh, deduction. The Arwen reference. Um, uh, uh, is the Psychonauts 2 out now? Yeah, it is. It's, that's it why is. I was going to play Psychonauts 1. It's, I haven't played it yet. And I should. But as, as you may have heard earlier, uh, Ian, in order to play, <laughs> he, he he's playing all the Assassin's Creed so that he. <laughs> Ian has to start at the beginning. He can't just. I just like to. It's... I yeah no no that's cool and you know. I also I paid like it. twenty bucks for Psychonauts on Steam or five bucks or whatever. I I paid money to have Psychonauts one on Steam. I yeah. may as well play it before I ruin it for myself and and that's fair. play a better that's fair. version of it. That's they fair. just released No More Heroes three, so I'm very excited to oh, snap. have an opportunity to play that. I have played No More Heroes one and two, and oh. those are great games. I don't know if anybody said this, but there's just so many games, you know? That's Fucking my games, guys. take. And movies and TV shows. There's too much. Yeah. And here we are contributing to the pile. <laughs> but, yeah. 
Add this to the pile. Um, Leviathan Den says, I'm looking forward to Back for Blood. Yeah, I, I'm excited to play it too. We played the... Open like the very early, like, like the alpha. And that was, it was pretty fun. There were some balancing things that needed to be done. I think this, the most recent beta, a lot of those things have kind of yeah, been... Closed, we played the closed alpha, that's right. We didn't even yeah. play like the open beta. But the most recent beta, I think uh, they've... It's gotten a little bit more honed in from no, what I've heard. <laughs> No! Ape Escape is the only no! perfect video game, says Zone Dog, and I have to agree, but I think Ape Escape 2 is the best one. Here's a funny uh, uh, thing about Ape Escape. When that came out, it was also, it was part of it was like a tech demo for analog sticks. The second analog stick, because and... I, I remember trying no! to play it. And to get <laughs> Zone Dog is no! teaching us that we need to up the cost no! of this sound alert. No! Uh... <laughs> I remember when it came out, and I was like, Boo, you <laughs> I was like, no, I like the D-pad, and I was mad. <laughs> I was mad that I was being forced, forced to use the analog sticks. I'm like, this is bullshit. This my is my freedoms. <laughs> and obviously, the analog sticks are way better. Everyone can oh my agree. God, absolutely. But uh, well, the, the, the thing time, is, the analog annoyed. stick. The analog stick was being misused because the, the you would use the second analog stick to swing your net in the direction that you moved the analog stick. But like nowadays, we all know it makes way more sense to use the second analog stick to control the camera instead of having like a jilted, like fucked up camera system. So, uh, <laughs> it was a tech demo for like a second analog stick. And it was frustrating because I remember trying to play it at a friend's house and I was like, this game's telling me I need a second analog stick. What the fuck is that friend's mom? And they're like, I don't fucking know. I'm a mom. <laughs> like, I bought that for my kid. Um, but uh, yeah, you. Oh, you're saying moms can't games. play video games, Ian? This mom didn't. Jeez. She was like, no thanks. I'm drinking my wine. Leave me alone. <laughs> um. I should hang out with my kid instead of playing his PlayStation. Nah. You Not just go. Like everybody knows you. You, as as a child, you pick friends that have the best gaming stuff absolutely yeah. um yeah. yeah and then i would after the analog sticks became standard i would use the d-pad instead because i was like <laughs> mad that was, and then finally they were like oh you have to use stand. analog sticks and i was just like god damn it i've lost the war and uh you know it's i see i see how much of a fool i was now you were a god dang fool it's true it's true all right, I'm gonna look up the actual Max Payne face now, <laughs> and uh, you did pretty do well. My, <laughs> do my best interpretation. But it's actually worse. It's why do they it's, do that? Why would they do that? He's squinting so fucking hard in this. Yeah, I need to for people who don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming most of our people do, but I'm gonna show you real quick. This is what his face looks like. Um, they use like they put like a photo. I mean, they did it for all the characters, but they like straight up put a That's photo. The writer of Alan Wake as the photo of the guy right there. They straight up put a photo of a face on this model, and it never changes. Maybe maybe slightly, but I don't think so. Especially at least in the first one. And he just has that this weird squinty face. I guess it changes slightly, but not much. He has this weird it, squinty it, face it, the whole time. It doesn't matter what's happening in the story. Anytime there's a cutscene, he still has that face. To some degree. He'll Actually, squint. the cutscenes are all like comic book. That's right. He'll squint harder when he's shoot. Like he's got two expressions. He's got one where he's squinting, but his eyes are open, um, which I'll post in the in the oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, squinting like, and squinting his... plus. Uh, yeah, he's got that, and then he's got the one you just showed, where his eyes are completely closed because he uh, <laughs> he's shooting. Um. The story's pretty dark, and he's got like this like stupid smirk on his face the whole time. Oh yeah, and like the the narration is so fucking funny. Like, uh, there was <laughs> like a bullet in the chest. We go very um, noir, which is fun. We go it's so weird. noir. Yeah, it's it's very goofy, but it's a lot of fun, and that's the point is that they're goofy and fun, and then they just kind of get more serious as the series goes on, and it sort of loses that like goofy. Like, the goofy flavor, I think, is part of what makes the first game uh, such a good time. 
Because otherwise you're just like shooting, d diving around, shooting dudes in like bland colored block rooms. Um, but they're fun. They're fun games. My favorite is whenever you'd like find some uh, some gangsters in the first one, they go like, "Oh, it's pain," <laughs> or they'd go, what they go, the? like, "They're like cartoon villain. They're like the henchman for the Joker." Yeah, like, exactly. Who is this guy? Like that's like yeah, they're like. Yeah, Just henchman voices. The most stereotypical like Italian mobster henchman voices you can yeah. think of. Like these get like there was one guy I remember. He's just like, hey, what we gonna do is? We <laughs> 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 talk the whole game. Good stuff. It's just fucking goofy. That's th those games are where I learned the phrase "wham bam, thank you, ma'am." Um, my Italian family did not. Uh, lay that nug of gold on me in conversation with them. Uh, Zone Dog says, Twitch won't let me spam, so it saved us from more uh, uh, Michael Scott yelling, which is good and bad, I, you know. I um, should probably put like a 30 minute cooldown on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's too much, but no, like maybe anything. we could up the price, but I mean, if, if the chat collectively wants to make us pay, I might. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, uh, message received. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> 30 minutes. Uh, 30 minutes. Leviath Leviathan Den says they did the same thing with that Jackie Chan video game, but like lower the definition to 60p. I think no, they're talking about the photos. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Interesting. No. Uh, Jackie Chan. Zone Dog says Johnny Knoxville could have played Max Payne instead. Yeah, it looks like him. It does actually look a lot more like uh, Johnny Knoxville than Mark. Marky Mark just doesn't look like Max Payne at all. We should watch that for our bad movie nights. I feel like that movie you get the next is probably pick. so bad it's boring. I do get the next pick. Um, we all know what I'm going to pick. You were trying to get an extra pick in our last conversation. I was just making a recommendation <laughs> for us to watch as a group. We watched Austin watch Eon Flux. And that wasn't like a, a pick off the wheel, so like, come on, honk honk. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But no, we should definitely watch some terrible fucking movies, because those are great to watch. Yeah, I've been busy lately, but I'm totally down to get back into it. Hell yeah! We'll get back into watching bad movies before we get back into Conan. That's for sure. Yeah, probably. Our our, uh, our uh, server closes in like a day, right? I just I just backed it up again today, so. All right, nice. So we can get back into it whenever we feel like it. Yeah. But you know, people are busy, and that's fine. That's. Uh, oh, that's sure. Yeah. So um, it's we'll get back into it when we're when we're all good and ready. Um, I want the whole squad there, so. Do you want Always to move on from this this drawing, or do you want to keep working on it? I'm done drawing Max Payne. For All sure. right, let's <laughs> save this and let's get something else going. Should we pick a a, a theme oh, and draw along with the chat? Yeah. That's always fun. I like that. Anybody in the chat want to recommend something that we can all draw as a group? Maybe we could go to that. We could pick a prompt from the old prompt website that we yeah, use occasionally. Yeah, we'll look at some. We'll look at some prompts. If anyone in the chat has ideas for prompts that we uh, will want to disregard, let us know. Yeah, we'll just say no to uh, you. Uh, uh, Zone Dog says Mad Max Pain Killer Instinct. Um, no, that's one that we'll disregard right there. Well, we just got. Uh, we have to draw Willem Dafoe now. Oh, <laughs> we do. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Okay. But doing what? Let me go to the prompt site. Oh, okay, something. like situation. Yeah. Do situation and see if I can find something. I might just draw Willem Dafoe, who knows. That's okay. fine. If you don't mind, I'm going to use the bathroom. If you want to quick go to the prompt site, look right, through right. that, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, you got your headphones on? I'll just read them out to you. Uh, Willem Dafoe, eating cook. Um, we got here... Uh, eating cookies again playing with fireworks hatching like out of an egg i might i'm gonna draw willem dafoe hatching out of an egg that's what's that's what i'm gonna draw 
<laughs> so I'm sorry, Brandon. Um, a person tampering with dark magic. You could draw Willem Dafoe learning, honing his wizard powers. Um, let's see here. Uh, an immense army of creatures descending from the mountains. You can draw, like, Willem Dafoe spiders. Willem de spiders. Um, drinking coffee under warm blankets. Um, being consumed by, like, the metallic thing in the Matrix. Uh, meeting the devil. Um, taking selfies at an inappropriate time. Uh, eating cookies. God, there's a whole bunch of uh, options there for you, Brandon. I don't know if you heard any of that, but... Um, those all sound pretty great to me. I mean, I'm gonna draw Willem Dafoe hatching out of a fucking egg. So, you can't stop me. I've returned. What do we got? Uh, I'm gonna draw Willem Dafoe hatching out of an egg. Okay. Um, you can draw him, like, eating cookies, or, you know, fucking, like... Uh, okay. really, whatever you want. Alright. Um, uh, Leviathan Denos inspired by you, I got some scotch as well. Nice. Little Glenn Levitt. I'll be honest, I mean, I started this, this stream pretty drunk. Like, I drank a bunch of vodka. Um, then it's only right that I try and catch up to you, you know? I mean, I've definitely sobered up since then, but, you know. This is a sobering experience doing this show. It is. It really, you gotta, you gotta sharpen up, you gotta talk while drawing, and that's just fucking hard as shit to do. I purposely cut off part of my head just so that the cat is in the shot. I'm okay with that. I love the cat being in the shot. But, um, yeah, okay, yeah. let's see here. When cats Watch are it. that size, that's my favorite size for kitties because they're so fucking tiny and cute, but like they're still a little lanky and they can do shit. Yeah. Oh, she's, look at her. She's pretty cute. What kind of Willem Dafoe am I gonna draw? That's the question. I, I read through a bunch. There's like Willem Dafoe eating cookies, Willem Dafoe doing dark magic. Oh, okay. Did you do like situation? Did you go to the prompt site, or did you just come up with those? Or are these in the chat? Oh no, these were uh, situation prompts from the website. I know what I'll do. All right. I just have to look up a reference real quick. You know, Willem Dafoe don't... tonguing Christopher Walken, which I think means putting like a tongue up his butthole. Ah. Um, Willem Dafoe baking pot brownies. Willem Dafoe getting a facial mask. Willem Dafoe's O face. Uh, Willem Dafoe doing taxes. Those are posted in the chat for you. If you... Right, let me find... Sky's the limit. Defoe whatever... Defoe's the limit. Defoe whatever you want. Alright. Gotta find a good Defoe picture to use. Okay, here we go. Oh, Leviathan Den just dropped a bunch of bits on us. Aw, oh, thanks Leviathan Den, you, you're too what sweet. What you doing to us? How could you drop us that many bits? That's crazy. Um, we could have had a talk show, the Defoe Show. The Willem Defoe Hour. Is it called um, the Defoe Show? That's the, 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 Willem Dafoe's sketch show that only had one season in the I would have loved early 2000s. to see Willem Dafoe's R&B group, uh, Belle Biv Dafoe. Um, that would have been <laughs> really good. Um, that girl is Spider-Man. Um, uh, there we go, that's my, that's my Willem Dafoe, Belle Biv Dafoe joke. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll be here all night. Good night. Um, we were all building towards that the whole show. Yeah, it's actually been why we made this show, like, two years ago. Yeah, it just took us 79 episodes to get there, but finally we did it. 
Look at that. And honestly, I'm relieved that we finally got it out of the way. Now we can now we can stop being friends because that's thank God. Planned. Yeah, all this planning has really soured our friendship. Um, also, waiting all that time for that pizza. Um, <laughs> that definitely, you know, that was on um, part of the clock of the amount of time we can be friends. Some of it was wasted yeah. on waiting for pizza. Waiting for a, what was the name of that place again? I don't remember. <laughs> it was like. Chenchio go cheese. <laughs> that was it. Chenchio go cheese. Adventure go cheese. Um. Yeah, that's it. I can already see Willem Dafoe in the hair. On yeah, mine? Really doing it. Yeah. Thanks. The face is the hard part to Dafoe. <laughs> um, We're gonna become experts eventually, cause people can oh, make yeah. us draw whenever they want. I think we can only redeem that one once per episode. It should be a rule. I believe so. I think we may have already set it up that way. It's a, it's a fair number of points. Like you have to. You really have to save. The hang sprint. out a lot in, in a two-hour stream. Like if it was like if we were doing like eight-hour streams, you know, there'd be a lot more opportunities to earn channel points. To, you know, redeem some Defoe drawings. But um, you know, because we we clock out around two hours, two and a half. Um, you know, you gotta really save those channel points for when you want them. Or if we were to just refund your points, like that would obviously give you your points back, but what if we don't? Yeah, you don't know. You don't know if we practice good business practices. No, we don't. Practice. Scarcity is key and we don't scarce. Or we do scarce, I guess. I don't know. I just made this verb up, it doesn't matter. Bell Bib Defoe. Boy, that's an ugly Defoe. I did much better last time. But it's alright, I'm sticking right. to it. This uh, Willem Dafoe is not coming out so hot. I think I'm trying. I think I'm looking too hard at my reference picture. Yeah, we gotta. Gotta like separate from the reference, because if you just try and draw like the picture you drew, it's gonna look Where the weird. Fuck like this wooden. is Jesus. All right, it's coming together. The mouth helped. I'm so sorry, I've swallowed your <laughs> good face with this terrible drawing. Not the best one to foe, but you know, I'll defoe to you. I, I was trying to think of a good def defer pun. Couldn't come up with one uh, that didn't seem like a huge stretch, but here you go. I'm doing me in the pun game. <laughs> Now I gotta kill you. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. My picture doesn't not look like Willem Dafoe, but it also doesn't look like Willem Dafoe. <laughs> it's, it's Willem Dafoe enough, I think. It looks like... It looks it, bad. It's not Willem Dafoe. It's pretty bad Willem Dafoe. It's like the, uh... It's like the Clint Howard to Ron Howard. <laughs> yeah. Wait, isn't that the guy who's, uh... You know who Ron Howard in... is? I know who Ron Howard is. I know who Clint Howard is. His I, I that's believe. his brother is. It's like, yeah, yeah it looks, looks like his brother, but he also is, like, <laughs> not the most attractive man. What were you saying? He's the inconceivable guy? No. Isn't but, he? no. I don't, he's always I know, plays like small parts. Nah, he's in Arrested Development as like a guy who sits in a tree. Yeah, that's him. Um, that's the guy. Who's who plays inconceivable guy now? And I don't know that actor's name. He's I in. Uh, he's in a lot of good stuff. 
He's in a lot of good stuff. Um, oh my god, what the fuck? Yeah, a picture where somebody combined. Uh, points to the chat if you can find the photo that what we both use for reference. I'm sure there's one on Google. One on Google Images that we're using. I don't think we are. Maybe. But uh, yeah, see if you can find the exact photo we used. Uh, yeah. That's the fun game. Great. I don't think we're using the same one. It's possible, but that would be yeah. surprising. I mean, it's, I used literally the first photo. <laughs> that oh, okay. Me. Oh yeah, I see it. There it is. You gave it away. Come on. You ruined the game. I'm sorry, guys. I did ruin the game. I did not use the first one. You used uh, row two. Wait, hold on. Actually, I got me. Uh, <laughs> Zone Dog row... says uh, this one. Uh, no, that is not correct, but good try. Uh, and great mustache on that Defoe. Good choice. That's like a shiny <laughs> Defoe. Um, that's a rare Defoe. The handlebar the mustache, mustache Defoe. Uh, so good try, but no, that is not the Defoe I used. No. This is the Defoe I think you used. Bingo! That is the Defoe. Points go to you. Uh, that's the Defoe. Good job. The the beard, um, you know, really obscures some of the face that's underneath this this character right here. It's another rare Defoe. The rare Defoe. The the facial hair Defoe I need is to not the common <laughs> face Defoe. What if there's a Defoe Pokemon? That's kind of what I was referencing when I called him a shiny Defoe. Yeah. Well, I called him a shiny Defoe. You called him a rare Defoe. Well, I, I said shiny originally. Did you? Oh, my I did. Goodness. I fucked up. <laughs> God damn it, man. God damn it. I missed all your fucking Pokemon references. This His own dog didn't make a joke, but he just straight up said Defoe pause. He couldn't be bothered to actually, like, use it in a sentence or try to... No, I'm Craft a joke. Though. I was trying. To... This whole time I've been trying to think of like another Defoe pun. But... Um. Yeah. <laughs> I changed my Defoe a little bit. It looks a little more like him. It still does not look. I think his eyebrow needs to be more. Yeah. Honestly, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> I'm start right. over. Oh god! Oh my goodness! My Defoe. Not like that. Um, let's, I'm just gonna draw Willem Dafoe and I'll draw the egg over his head. I drew, um, I was doing, <clears throat> I was participating in a Lord's Pew uh, dueling drawing requests last night and uh, one of the topics was like drawing uh, two Twitch streamers, or I think this is the one guy was a Twitch streamer. So I did portraits of them real quick, and I actually ended up liking the portraits I did. I was like, oh, hey, that, that looks like them. Oh, and now cool. I'm, I'm like trying to like get that channel that same sort of essence, <laughs> and I can't do it. It's hard. It's I mean, portraits are hard. It's one of those things, the more you do it, the better you get. And I'm not, like, an expert by any means, but I've definitely gotten better over the years just by trying. I mean, you know, it's still hard as shit. Yeah, I've gotten a lot better, but I'm having that issue, like, right, right now, where I just keep drawing the fucking reference picture. I gotta... Yeah, I have that issue a lot, too, and I get further and further away from my style the more I try to hone it in. But I'm getting yeah. better at kind of keeping both things intact. It's just difficult. Uh, Zone Dog says, uh, Macy's Day Willem de Float. Alright, uh, we'll give it to you. Judges? Uh, Judges are gonna give it to you. Oh, wow. But you're on thin ice, mister. <laughs> I don't see any more of that. We need to be able uh, to, what if... to do a boo, we, boo you stink to them. Yeah, what if, um, Willem Dafoe were to star in the next MacGruber movie? Go ahead, do your joke. TV <laughs> Willem DeForte. Oh, you stink! 
Wait, uh, uh, wait, hold on. Willem Dafoe Arte. I understand. Get it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Because, uh... He's done other things since that movie. <laughs> I know, but that's the only thing I can think of <laughs> off the top of my head. Like, what's who's he played? What's the name of the character in something he's played more recently? Good question. Anyone? I don't know. Personally. Oh, that's yeah. He was the last person on Earth, wasn't he? Your last man on Earth. There was a. I don't know how I feel about the show itself. Uh, I kind of lost lost some interest as it went on, but uh, there's a show on Netflix called Sweet Tooth that I watched, and he had a, he had a small role in that, or a decent sized role in that. Tooth. I'm trying to think if I uh, remember that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think you've seen that. It, it's fairly new. Okay. There's certain aspects I liked and a lot of things I didn't, but uh, yeah. It was kind of cool. Interesting. It's like a post-apocalyptic thing, but uh, they, it's kind of like a... Oh, the, with the fucking the kid deer with kid. the deer antlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, I, I saw that and I was kind of like, uh, I, I passed on it mentally. Yeah. It's honestly the deer antler kid. I was just like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> I didn't want to see it. Not not saying that you... You're, you're calling me watching. stupid. I understand. Yeah, I'm calling you stupid. No, I just saw the kid with the deer antlers, and I was just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. That's fair. This uh, Willem Dafoe is actually turning out worse than the other one. I'm trying to... <laughs> well, don't give up yet. You know, the wrinkles are what make the Dafoe. And you haven't had those yet. You got, a, you got an airbrush Dafoe right there. the mouth honestly is what's what's the mouth is such an important feature on a defoe it's it's a very it's like one of the most defining features i would say because like he smiles but like his smile is like his upper lip will never like his his upper lip is always going to be like this shape <laughs> but he still manages to smile with it he's got a smile that even when he's feeling joy you feel on edge <laughs> yeah he should play the next Joker, honestly. People have made that comment in the past. Fucking watch the shit out of that, dude. What a weird world we live in where we're like, who's gonna be the next Joker? Like, it's like a season of The Bachelor or something. Like, there's been like 20 yeah. of them. My, I'm gonna throw down money. Who's gonna be the next person to kill themselves after playing the Joker, you know? No, you have to now. It's part of it. It's part of the contract, I think. Only you can play a good Joker. Is that insensitive? Was that an insensitive bit we just did there? Uh, I don't think anybody has killed themselves as the Joker, so. No, I, I guess I think you're good. I was, I was more referencing like. I, I get it, but I mean, there is like a weird like, like Jared Leto played it, and he's like, "Yeah, I was." It made me crazy too, and it's like, "Shut up, Jared Leto! Stop!" <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Jared Leto! <laughs> Stop <laughs> trying to. <laughs> Be included. Yeah. Fucking Jared Leto. I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate him, he just annoys the shit out of me. Like, everything I've heard about him in, like, the last five years, I'm just like, God, shut the fuck up, my dude. Yeah. I'm nothing Jared Leto. I don't hate him, but I also just don't really care. Yeah, I much. think that's... Yeah, like, if I see him... My blood. If I like see an uh, article headline with Jared Leto's name in it, like my blood pressure might raise a little bit, and I'll be like, <laughs> "What does this fucking guy do now?" But otherwise, I don't spend my time thinking about him. Yeah, that's it. That's fair. This fucking Willem Dafoe is just turning out horribly. I've done much better Willem Dafoe's in previous You have, episodes. I've seen them. I mean, your current ones. Pull that, let's see, let's see. How can we correct this Dafoe? 
He's got too much of a under chin. You gotta, you gotta, you know. He's got a lot of define that there. jawline a little bit. He looks like, you know, he's playing a role where he had to gain some weight. Yeah, he does look like that. But there's certain things he got very right about that Defoe. He's got he's got a hell of a chin though, I gotta say that he's got like got like a very ang a very square jaw. Yeah, the tooth gap is a big part. The it's teeth are a very big part. He's got like the fangs. Like Yeah. The teeth on the sides are long. <laughs> the vampire. He's in the Underworld series. I'd watch that. I'd watch those if he was in those. For the, the folks in the drop bomb, we did start watching Underworld as part of like a, we were like riding high on the fumes of the Resident Evil movies. Um, we thought we could replicate we it so Underworld. simply. Not easy to do. <laughs> it's not. And uh, we watched Underworld 1 and then we were just like, meh, no more. What I, what I found with uh, drawing people is like a big part of getting them them looking like they look is is their expression. Like yeah. uh, people smile like their own way, <laughs> like their sure. their the corners of their mouths like do different things when they smile, and uh, like when somebody's just sort of like idle or whatever, like their face will be doing different things than like somebody else's face. It's That's like, the answer to you know, keeping your own style while still getting a likeness is find the, it's like a caricature, find the little things that make it them. Yeah. While still, it's you know. It's like, yeah. The the expression, because I think I, I, I think I sort of like thought about this after, like I remember thinking about this and then I was watching like a video where it's just like, what, how does deep fake technology work? And they were just like, well, when somebody's expression like we take photos of them doing these expressions and then we use that so that their eyebrows and stuff stretch to those things when the person in the video does these things i was like oh man that makes a lot of fucking sense and it, it because like if you have wretched resting bitch face like a person who has like resting bitch face is gonna look so weird if you see them like walking around and just like smiling <laughs> like ear to ear everywhere True. because it's it's not the, them it's not them so i feel like that's a big part of uh whether or not somebody looks like themselves or not is are you getting there like because like a neutral expression of willem dafoe does not look like a neutral expression for other people you're not and, wrong uh, about that i think uh, yeah i think that's like where you're Face, what your face looks like is a big part of the expression. So there's my Willem Dafoe. That actually and finished. It's not the worst Willem Dafoe I've drawn. That's a Dafoe right there. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say it. I'm drawing Dafoe stranding if it isn't obvious yet. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. Oh yeah, I gotta draw him hatching out of an egg now. Um, <laughs> what if I just like put like, like goo and stuff all over him because of like the amniotic fluid and stuff and like an egg or whatever? He's yoked. <laughs> yeah, he's like a yoked Defoe. Oh god, draw like a muscular gym rat Defoe. <laughs> That'd be oh, wow. horrifying. Maybe next time. I'm sure we'll be drawing more Defoes in our future. Oh, for sure. I actually like this segment. That's it's pretty fun. It's a fun. It's a fun. Uh, uh, channel point thing. Another channel point thing we should do. I'm thinking of this just now, but it should be draw Scyther from memory. <laughs> That's a great one. Then eventually we'll be good at it. Yeah. So um, we should add that as ASAP. ASAP oh. Rocky. Um, Yeah, my Willem Dafoe. It started out, I hated it, but now this this Dafoe is, first of all, a lot better than the previous Dafoe I was drawing. Improved under Dafoe. Um, 
Oh boy, Zone Dog has just been peppering the chat with I know, the fire puns. I can't read them all. There's too many, but you can go through the list if you'd like. I think the audience would love love to hear it. Duffographic. Like an infographic, but it's Duffographic. Right. Um, Defoe Pa, as you said before. Um, I think it's set to Willem by default. That by default? Is that what he's going for? I don't know. Default, I think is what he's doing there. Uh, okay. Uh, Macy's Day, Willem Defoe. Yeah, we saw that one. Willem the Friend. So no one told you life was going to be this way. Oh, yeah, because he's doing the theme song. Tooth Gap, Close Encounters of the Defoe Kind. Um... Those are all good ones. I mean... You really did what you set out to do. I, I like when De Willem Dafoe is... He's in a, a mafia. And they're like, hey, can you do the thing? And he's like, Dafoe, forget about it. <laughs> I, yeah, I love that scene too. It was a good one. Uh, Xenu says, put my Dafoe in the draw bomb chat. Oh, did we get a... Yes! Let's see, I'll bring it up right now. Always excited. Everybody, sh you know, this is just all the more reason. Join in, draw along with us, and we'll put it on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, Z-Nudes. Fantastic. Well done, I'm going to show it here in just a second. Um, so, he did a transparent background, so you can't exactly see it, but over here it says Willem de Fuck. But that's a, that's a good, and that... That's, I think, exactly what we were just talking about, too, like keeping your style and getting the likeness down. I think Zach nailed it on that regard. Yeah. Good job. I like that. Thank you for participating. We appreciate it. I like how chaotic it feels. <laughs> it feels like that's, very chaotic. That's Willem Dafoe's aura. Yeah, absolutely. Why'd you spill your beans? He looks nigh Joverish in that picture. What did I just... Much obliged, friends, he says. Oh, Willem Dafoe say? is a voice. I was just going to say, what did I just hear or see him in? And he, he does a voice in that 12 hours, I think it's called, or whatever, it's 12 minutes. Oh, that video game that's on Game Pass? Yeah, yeah. He does There's a voice in that? That's fantastic. There's like three characters in the game, and he plays a cop. Or he plays, you know, some dude who says he's a cop, or whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah. I just you saw somebody playing it. Play it. I didn't play it, but uh, I saw it on... on Twitch. No, he's he's a bad guy, kind of. Okay. Ish. Not not fully. That's the thing, it, he's a complicated character. Kind of weird if he played like a, a normal guy, right? <laughs> I think he, he occasionally does that, but it's. He just, does. He's got a face for a villain. He does. Um, I mean, in Spider-Man, he kind of played mostly a normal guy, except for when he was the Green Goblin, which was behind a mask. Like. Yeah. He was, otherwise, he was like just a normal guy. <laughs> Zenu heard me. Why? Why'd you spill your beans? <laughs> that movie was weird, but I, I enjoyed it. I still gotta watch it, but I, I definitely uh, talking about. I have of course, access to it. The Lighthouse, strange film. It's an experience. Talk a lot. Starring Willem Dafoe as the romantic lead. Um, <laughs> Talk a lot. Defoe Stranding, I guess, is the obvious title for this drawing, right? Yeah. Defoe Stranding. So, I think Willem Defoe's gonna be in the new Spider-Man, because they did, like, a... They showed his little bomb rolling, and you heard his laugh. A very clear yeah. Willem Defoe laugh. I've seen so many... Seen the trailer. I've seen so many breakdowns of, like, all the, uh, references to, like, things that are definitely yeah. gonna be in the new movie from the trailer. Yeah, so sorry I if I'm really sick of... Them sick of hearing about it so much i just it's kind of a cool oh, concept that's interesting. they've been setting it up for a while it made so like when people were predicting it i was in my head i was just like it was like that thing we talked about maybe last episode or something like that where it was like okay well this is a meme now you have to do it otherwise people are going to be disappointed right and uh, once again they fell right in line they did it and also i think it's this thing where people are like with all the reboots it's almost like it's kind of a, you know, it's a stupid thing. Like, you know, you get people on board and then you start over again and you're just, people feel like, all right, enough already. So it's kind of cool that they're yeah. taking all these reboots and making something out of it. That hasn't been done yet. That's a unique 
thing. Yeah, I as far as I, I mean, I maybe think... it's been done in some small capacity, like one-off jokes if and they're... stuff. But yeah, if they're gonna if they're gonna fucking start Spider-Man fresh every five years, they might as well make it play into a larger thing because yeah. that at least gives it some sort of payoff. Otherwise, it's just like, why the fuck did I? <laughs> Give a right. shit about this Spider-Man when you're like, just gonna start. Feel like over. a sucker for like yeah. buying tickets to one iteration out of ten. Exactly. So no, I'm glad that they're uh, bringing them all back. And it's like the one thing that makes sense for all these reboots that they've done. Yeah, especially um, in Spider-Man because it has the whole the Spider-Verse is like a thing that's been in the comics for a while now. It's not new. Yeah. Well, every, every fucking comic, eventually, like, DC and Marvel both have multiple right. universes because it's the only way they can reboot, like, a 50-year-old, like, series and still have the old stuff be relevant is like, oh, it's a fucking different universe. So it, it's, it's interesting because it's, like, something they've been doing in the comics, I want to say since, like, the 80s or, so, or, like, the 90s or something like Probably that. Probably true. But now yeah. it's, like, starting to hit the movies, <laughs> which is kind of funny. It, it's... Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so hopefully it's cool. I, it'd be fun to see a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man again. Yeah. Wonder absolutely. how he'll play it. I'm curious. Like, he's gonna have to be more elderly. Like, those are 20 well, yeah. years ago that we saw him. He was like 25 or something like that. He's gonna be like a 45-year-old Spider-Man. But also it's interesting because tonally, a movie from, you know whatever the 2000s and now are different you know there's things that would be considered super campy or cheesy now that were just like the way it was done then so yeah for the character to still feel like the same guy they're gonna have to somehow kind of like you know make him be act like this movie was made you know his character was made yeah a long time ago or maybe that's just yeah, how we would act spider-man today i don't know I don't know, I'm curious, because uh, back when they were doing those movies, they had less of an idea, I think, of how to do a, a, a comic book movie. Um, and, uh, no, I mean, Spider-Man's always been like... Uh, no, God, please, no! 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 You were saying? So, um... <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> back then, like, I mean, Spider-Man in the comics and... Uh, such has always been like a joker. He's always been like, oh, well, they leave you hanging. Oh, my God, I'm late for class. I guess I better take my spider web. Or, you know, he's been like making quips he's, he the whole time. That, yeah. and, and then like uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, I remember being very not quippy. He, so he was, but it felt, it didn't, the thing is, not to cut you off, but yeah, the thing about his quippiness is that <laughs> I feel like the current iteration got has probably done the best job, honestly. But uh, for sure, yeah. He, Peter Parker's supposed to be a dork when he's himself, and then cool and like when he's Spider-Man. But his yeah. version of Spider-Man, he had the quips, but it still felt dorky even when he was in the costume. <laughs> it felt dorky, and it, I because like also I feel like the tension was like when he does the quips in the the modern ones. It, it can be frustrating, because it'll be like, oh, here's Spider-Man making a fucking quip again. Here we go. Um, although I feel like, like, like you said, the Tom Holland ones have done it the best, where it, like, lands. But, like, you know, Marvel movies attempts at humor have not always landed, but for Spider-Man, right. I feel like they do more so. But I remember we were watching, like, Endgame or Infinity War, and they were, like, being like, oh, boy, it's just, like, fucking Minecraft or whatever the fuck. Like, they were just making, like, pop culture references to the point where even Iron Man was like, hey, dude, like, stop stop making Shut pop culture up. references in Infinity War, please. Um, but I feel like in the Tobey Maguire ones, they wouldn't have that second of, like, levity where he, like, makes a quip, and then they let you know, like, he's winking at the camera, because then it'd be right on to, like, oh, no, stop, don't get murdered by Dr. Octopus. Maybe not. Maybe that's not the case. I don't know. Um, I, awesome just never, scene, I never felt honest. like his quippiness I, I never felt like his quippiness landed and so That's it's going to be interesting to see if it works in the new one I don't know I, don't I made know. the baby a Defoe too perfect that's excellent I've liked the last two Spider-Man 
Spider. Me too. I, I, well, I've seen I've seen Far From Home. Um, I haven't seen Homecoming, but I, I want to. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed Far From Home. I had a good time with it. Uh, it's interesting because I didn't notice the uh, naming convention with home being in them until I believe you mentioned it. Mm. But yeah, now the new one's called like No Way Home. So like the first one's Homecoming, it's Far From Home, then it's No Way Home. Like, what's the deal with home? Like, <laughs> what's uh? Right, and then the other thing I'm like, okay, so you're not making that many of these, right? Because you can't just keep doing that. It would be weird if you make like. Oh yeah. 10 Spider-Man. Yeah. Now it's like homeward bound. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we almost lost Tom Holland as Spider-Man like a year or two ago or something like when, that. Like there was that the, news that like Sony or Marvel hadn't come to a budget agreement or something. Oh like yeah. That. They got that cleared away, I guess. Yeah. Let's throw some more money at it. Problem solved. Yeah. Not sure I remember the exact like issue behind all that, but that sounded about like it. Which is interesting because yeah, like what uh, X Men, Spider Man, still owned by Sony. Yeah, and, unfortunately. Uh, up to them if we ever see like, uh, cause like I don't think we're ever gonna see like X Men meets the you know, Avengers or something like that. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not that. But until I think, I think not until Disney it'll... buys Sony. The acquisition has got to happen at some point, right? I mean, I'm just expecting everything to be swallowed yeah. up by, like, one corporation by the end the, of everything. The, the comment I always make is that like, if, if if we have any people in the chat who are from the South, you may already know this, but you go to the South and you order, like, a soda, they just call them all Cokes, and I feel like movies are just going to be called Disney's at some point. Yeah. And I'm not the first one to have that make that comment, I know, but still, it's, it's totally... I would say pretty. <laughs> it's a good I chance. But uh, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see if uh, spite what happens in the Spider Man's. I finally saw Enter the Spider Verse, so people can get off my fucking case. Um, and I enjoyed that movie a lot. I had a really great time watching it. Yeah, I think um, that's my favorite Spider Man movie, honestly. It's a good one. Yeah, probably my favorite, too. I mean, I think it was the best... It was definitely the best Spider-Man movie ever, I think. Yeah. I think that goes without saying. It was just, far and away, the best Spider-Man movie ever made. It hit all the buttons. It did. It did. Yeah. And the style great. The best, yeah, I was about to say, it was probably, like, one of the best animated things I've ever seen, if we're going to be completely honest. It was just, like... Everything about that movie's like visuals were very well done. Yeah. And uh, intentional and, and like everything. Like the, every time I was just like, man, this movie's got some crazy shit going on. They definitely used up the budget and the rest is going to be pretty okay crazy shit. Uh, then the, the shit would just get crazier and I'd be like, okay. That's how this is playing out. It's a good flick, for sure. Good ratio of crazy shit to not crazy shit going on. True. How's your Defoe coming along? I like the, I like the colors and the shading you've gone to with that. Thank you. I think, I, I think I'm all done. Honestly, I'm almost done. I'm just closing these boxes. Definished? <laughs> Is that what you said? I was, I was trying to think of something. Definished. Um, I'm out of the fuel. Sorry if I I'm stole that from you. I'm, I'm gonna start acting too. a Willem the fool. I think it's time that you drop some plugs, because I'm going to finish up mine, and then we're probably out of here. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to go see a Moyle get my Wilm de Foreskin cut. Uh, anyways. Um, oh, boy. Uh, while we're talking plugs, everybody, um, I do this fucking show every 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that's 9 Central, 10 Mountain, 11 uh, Pacific. And then Those if you're not in the United States, like, what are you even doing here? But, um... What? I do it at, you know, I do it 
every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's fucking stupid. It's called Draw Bomb. You've really been dragging us through the mud the last few episodes. Every plug. I should stop letting you do them. <laughs> Being the one. this fucking dickhead. Oh, God. <laughs> such a piece of shit. Why you gotta be like that, man? Hey, man. Why you gotta be like that? <laughs> um... Yeah, but draw bomb every 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Otherwise, uh, I got nothing I can report on that is worth checking out now. Maybe soon. Who knows? Um, got some. You got some you, fun things cooking up. Um, same. Draw bomb's my only main project right now. Um, but I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We got we got Zone Dog. We got Zenut, Slyth, and Den. Uh, Extra right, Attack RPG. Right. right. Is that everybody? Did I name everybody? I think that's everybody who I saw in the chat. I can't think yeah. of anybody else. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. It's very fun. Thank appreciate you for suggesting this defo. I'm going to finish it up, obviously, before we go, but we're almost oh, there. Right, well, well, we'll start adding Draw Cypher from memory to the chat yeah. functions ASAP. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for... Uh, I haven't learned my uh, lesson. I still don't know how to draw Cypher. I, I feel like we got better the third time we did it. Probably true, <laughs> but, but I can see me so regressing long. since it's been a while. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but, um, fucking thanks for thanks for tuning in, everybody. We appreciate you. Thanks for watching and... while we defoned it in. Ooh, gosh, that was when we were missing. Just um, thought of it. Nice. That was your Willem to uh, go ahead. Um, one, one, one. Your Willem to finishing blow. That's that's true. Um, and great job, by the way, on that. Thanks. Nailed it. It was the best one of the night. That's why we ended on it. You always got to end strong. Who should we uh, raid? Should we raid someone? Finish. Um, you know, I've actually heard recently that unless people know who you are, some people get mad if you raid them. But we can raid I Can Be Danny. Yeah, um, that seems fun. Here. Is he on? Yeah, he's on right now. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Um, I was logged oh, off. That, that explains that it. Raid piece of shit. No, All right, he's let's, a very nice let's, person, actually. Yeah, it's a good show, too, if you haven't seen it. It's fun. Ooh, uh, Xenud says Willem Defopus Magnum. Pretty good one. That is a good one. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. We're gonna Thank you, everybody. We're going to flip over to I Can Be Danny here in just a second. Just uh, a second see you next do. week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. And...